Tonight, live from the Footprint Center in Phoenix, Arizona, comes to you the biggest, baddest, and hottest event of the summer, and there's a whole lot of writing on these stories. Championships, competition, and personal vendettas. These men, these women, battle it out in the Valley of the Sun to close out the past and find new futures. This is the chance they have been searching for, the moment they have been chasing after, the opportunity to stand victorious, be a winner, be a champion. It all comes down to this, right here, right now, live for the world to witness. Welcome to the biggest party of the summer. Welcome to SummerSlam. And now, WWE presents SummerSlam. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome inside a sold out Footprint Center right here in Phoenix, Arizona. Can you feel the electricity? A capacity crowd is on hand to witness the biggest party of the summer. Live from the Valley of the Sun comes to you, Summer Slam. And we open tonight with the much anticipated first time ever meeting. It's the future versus the franchise. It's the return of a 16 time world champion. The face that runs the place versus a young man with the it factor, the potential future of the WWE. All day, Austin Theory, one on one with John Cena, right now. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing in at 220 pounds, Austin Theory. This young man, Austin Theory, we speak about it every time he steps foot in the squared circle. He's got all the tools to be the next big thing, the next big superstar here in the WWE. But it's all about getting your hand raised. It's all about catching the W's each and every time you're inside the ring. Austin Theory's building momentum as of late. But as of a couple of weeks ago, he wanted to test himself. He wanted the biggest challenge of his career. He wanted the franchise, John Cena, in this huge matchup here tonight at SummerSlam. Austin Theory's in the ring. And the noise has taken over the Footprint Center here in Phoenix because the franchise is in the house. And his opponent from West Newberry, Massachusetts, weighing in at 251 pounds. The 16-time World Heavyweight Champion of the WWE is back here tonight. Weeks ago, he accepted the challenge of All Day Austin Theory via Twitter. But tonight, for the first time in over a year, John Cena steps foot inside the squared circle to go one-on-one -on -one with the potential future of the WWE, All Day Austin Theory. This is how you kick off the biggest party of the summer. Nine big time matches, five championships to be decided, personal vendettas, but this match right here, it's all about competition. It's all about building towards the future. Will Austin Theory spoil the return of John Cena or will the franchise come out swinging here tonight? Welcome to SummerSlam, ladies and gentlemen. Austin Theory, John Cena, the battle has rung and we are underway with our opening contest. This is going to be an exciting night inside the Footprint Center, live from Phoenix, Arizona. We're in the Valley of the Sun tonight, as Austin Theory has taken the, taken the fight to John Cena immediately off the opening bell. Austin Theory has been very active in the WWE for the last number of months. In recent weeks, he's defeated Cameron Grimes this past week on Monday Night Raw has earned a victory over John Morrison, Kushida, Akira Tozawa. It's a good test for Austin Theory, but this is clearly the biggest one of his career yet, as John Cena bringing Theory into the corner, delivering those left hands, and Austin Theory pushing him off here. Theory's obviously coming into this match with a plan. 
John Cena is a man he has looked up to throughout his career, which is why he wanted to face John Cena here tonight to truly test himself and prove that he is, in his mind, the future of the WWE. And Theory going to the cover, looking to knock off John Cena early here. We know how just tough and how gritty John Cena can be in the ring. Over his 20-year career in the WWE, we have seen him go to work. We've seen him go to town. We've seen him dig down deep and have some of the most wildest matches, not just in his career, but in WWE's history. There's a reason he is a former 16-time World Heavyweight Champion of the WWE, a former United States Champion, a former Tag Team Champion as well. John Cena's held the money in the bank. He's won the Royal Rumble. WrestleMania main events, John Cena has done it all in World Wrestling Entertainment. He doesn't need to be in this ring right now. He doesn't need to be taking this fight. It's the spirit of the competition and the love for the WWE, which is why John Cena is in the heart of Phoenix here tonight. He wants to test himself against these young superstars of tomorrow, such as Austin Theory. A guy that a lot of people compare to a young John Cena, which is why this is such an intriguing contest here tonight. Remember, this is Cena. Wait a minute, Cena's going for the cover on Theory here. Theory gets the shoulder up. And remember, this is John Cena's first match back in the WWE in well over a year. You gotta wonder, as tough as John Cena is, and as active as he stays, you gotta wonder if there's any sort of ring rust for John. It's been a hot minute since he's competed inside the squared circle. Austin Theory, as we mentioned, has been very active on Monday Night Raw, as well as main event the last number of weeks. Austin Theory here. John Cena's been in control the last number of minutes. Theory with a nice kick to the midsection here. And now he's got Cena in a fireman's carry position. And he hangs John up in the top rope. Austin Theory's got to keep the momentum going here. Again, for Theory, this is all about proving himself as the true future of the WWE. He's got Cena up. Look at this. Look at the strength of Theory to put John Cena in an electric chair position. Push him out into the German suplex. Very impressive by the young man who follows it up with that signature shooting star press. And he goes for it again, but went to the well too many times as John Cena had it scattered the second time. The franchise player gets the knees up. He's got a hold of all day Austin Theory with that reverse suplex. John Cena is looking good in his return thus far, but Austin Theory is hanging in there. It's been a great matchup since the opening bell. What a way to kick us off here at SummerSlam tonight with his first time ever matchup between Austin Theory and John Cena. On a night that's going to feature five championship matches, including our main event, which is going to be AJ Styles defending the WWE Championship against the man cashing in the Money in the Bank briefcase edge. Wait a minute, Austin Theory cradles John Cena up and sends him to the mat. One of his signature maneuvers there, but he's looking to follow it up with the elbow drop. Austin Theory clearly looking to put more of the hurt on John Cena. Doesn't feel it's enough to put the franchise away thus far. Cena may be dazed off this flurry of offense from all day Austin Theory. There he is, Cena waking up a little bit there off that elbow. Gonna send Theory into the corner. John Cena's got something in mind. You don't see Cena go up top too often, but clearly he's looking to take Austin Theory for a ride. Big time superplex from the top rope. John Cena takes control back in this contest here and the franchise player is feeling it in his return to the ring. But Austin Theory dodging it there, had that move from John Cena scouted. It's been a great contest, really back and forth between Theory and Cena to kick us off tonight. And Theory with that big time brain buster on John Cena. Get him to put him away, but not enough just yet. That brain buster has paid dividends for Austin Theory in the past, but it's not enough to keep John Cena down here. Fouls it up with that signature shooting star. Press again, goes behind into the German suplex. You see Theory's going to the well with a lot of his signature maneuvers repetitively in this contest. He wants to work, or excuse me, wants to use what works against John Cena here. And Cena's got Theory scouted, goes for the clothesline. Instead of Lux for the punches here. And John with a nice crossbody. A crossbody from John Cena, one of the maneuvers. Wait a minute here. I'm gonna cut myself off, because Cena, a little bit of you can't 
see me on Austin Theory. You want to talk about signature maneuvers. There's one out of the franchise player. And that could be enough to keep Theory down. But Austin Theory gets the shoulder up. John Cena pulling out that five knuckle shuffle. But Theory able to get the shoulders up, hanging in this matchup with John Cena. Win, loser, draw so far. Austin Theory's looking good in his first ever outing against John Cena here tonight. But as we mentioned, when Austin Theory is making his way down to the ring tonight, it's all about getting your hand raised. And that's what's so pivotal and so important for Austin Theory in these early days of his WWE career. To rack up those victories and keep his momentum going week after week. But Cena goes for the splash. And that time Theory got out of the way. And a nice kick there. Oh, wait a minute. Austin Theory folded John Cena inside out. Cena eats the canvas. And Cena may be knocked out for good. But Cena gets the shoulder up. Austin Theory caught Cena off his game there. Cena did something uncharacteristic. Going for that dive off the middle rope. Theory had it scouted that gave Theory enough time to fold Cena inside out. And now he's going for the submission hold here. Not something we see Theory do too often, but he's bringing the fight any means necessary to John. Cena able to power out, using his strength to his advantage. Austin Theory's no small man, but John Cena, clearly the veteran here. Able to get out again, a nice clothesline. This match is truly, as we mentioned a few minutes ago, been back and forth since the opening bell. You gotta give Theory credit. He has scouted John Cena well, but clearly Cena has done his homework on the young man. And now Theory's dazed. And Cena once again dropping that, dropping that right hand. I believe Theory, if I'm not mistaken, may have been cut open there. And that is not gonna go well for Austin Theory in the later rounds of this contest that we are in right now. Now you smell a sense of urgency as Austin Theory once again goes back to that German suplex just to cut John Cena's momentum off. Austin Theory, you smell the sense of urgency now that he's been busted wide open by the bare knuckles of John Cena. Here he's unloading a little bit on the franchise player, but Cena takes him down, taking him off his feet with that clothesline. And there's another shot by John. Follows up with the axe hammer. And Theory is in trouble here. The blood trickling from the forehead. Oh, wait a minute here. Theory starting to unload. John Cena now may be in trouble. Maybe a little dazed as he gets sent down to the canvas. And Theory, look at this, going for the cover. Trying to take John Cena off his game and pick up the victory. But Cena gets the shoulder up. And Cena follows up that crossbody. What I was going to mention earlier is that's a very uncharacteristic move for John Cena is that crossbody there. That's the second time he's hitting this contest. But this move right there, a signature maneuver for Cena to take his opponent off his feet. And Theory's dazed and confused. Cena's got something in mind. Oh, look at this. Attitude adjustment to all day Austin Theory. Cena to the cover. John Cena picks up the victory in his return to the WWE. Credit where it's due. The young man hung in there from bell to bell with John Cena. But the franchise player came back swinging here tonight. And it is return in the WWE. Taking the fight to the young man, Austin Theory. And John Cena in the end is the man getting his hand raised off an incredible contest to kick us off here tonight at the biggest party of the summer, SummerSlam. Here is your winner, John Cena! John Cena is back, and he's made a statement. A big win over Austin Theory in his return to the ring, but the question lies now. Now that John Cena is back in the WWE, what is next for the franchise player? Could it be championship gold? Could it be another test against a young competitor? We will find out in weeks to come, but John Cena is back to kick us off here tonight. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE Cruiserweight Championship. The first of five championship matches here tonight at the biggest party of the summer comes to you from WWE's cruiserweight division. And here comes your challenger, 
one of the most innovative and exciting high flyers in the game today. The number one contender, the one, the only, Ricochet. Ricochet earned this opportunity a number of weeks ago on Monday Night Raw as he made his way through the Cruiserweight Championship Eliminator. In the opening round, he defeated Humberto Carrillo as well as Lince Dorado. He then moved on to the finals to take on Isaiah Swerve Scott in a rematch from over a month ago where this time the one and only bested the Swerve. Ricochet earned the opportunity on that night. But on top of that, this past week on WWE Main Event, Ricochet alongside Isaiah Swerve Scott in tag team action were able to defeat Legato Del Fantasma's Joaquin Wilde and Raul Mendoza. And with that victory, Joaquin Wilde and Raul Mendoza from Legato Del Fantasma have been banned from ringside from this contest. So Santos Escobar is going to have to go it alone for the first time in his Cruiserweight Championship reign, this time against the one and only here tonight. This is definitely a huge opportunity for Ricochet. All the pieces are aligned for success, but he's got to get the job done against a man who has been dominant, reigning atop the cruiserweight division ever since April the 11th at the Backlash pay-per-view where he won that cruiserweight championship for the very first time. It was the first time in WWE, I should say, for cruiserweight championship gold for Santos Escobar as he was the NXT champion at one point. But regardless, Santos Escobar won the championship, began this reign on April 11th at Backlash. Since then, he has retained the championship over Grand Metalik, Isaiah Swerve Scott. Recent victories in his career as well over the Brian Kendrick, as well as Kushida. Santos Escobar, ever since winning the gold, has been nothing short of dominant. He truly has reigned over top the cruiserweight division in the WWE, a division that is extremely competitive and extremely hard fought. And that is why Ricochet has definitely earned his opportunity here tonight. And with Joaquin Wilde and Raul Mendoza not in the picture, Santos Escobar for the first time in this championship reign is going to have to go it alone against the one and only Ricochet. This should be an exciting cruiserweight contest here tonight. Ricochet earned this opportunity. But Santos Escobar, you know he's always got a plan coming inside the ring. The Cruiserweight Championship's on the line. It's your first of five championship matches here this evening at the biggest party of the summer, SummerSlam. Let's send things down to the ring for your official introductions. Introducing the challenger from Paducah, Kentucky. Weighing in at 190 pounds. And introducing the champion from Mexico City, Mexico, weighing in at 200 pounds, he is the WWE Cruiserweight Santos Escobar. Santos Escobar could be possibly lending over the WWE Cruiserweight Championship for the very last time. It's been an exciting reign, but will it come to an end? The one and only Ricochet is on top of the world right now. But all that matters here tonight is who walks out with that gold right here. Is it going to be Ricochet, or is it going to be Santos Escobar? Let's get this Cruiserweight Championship match underway. The bell has sounded. Ricochet immediately taking Santos Escobar off his feet with the clothesline. Follows it up with the number one. Ricochet is going to be sticking and moving in this contest. Santos Escobar, we've talked about in the past, one of his strong suits is the ability to fight a lot of different styles in the cruiserweight division. He can go high flying, he can go high risk, but he also ground and pound. He can also be technical. Santos Escobar's got a lot of different styles inside of that ring that he knows how to use. Ricochet's got to use his strong suit, which is taking it to the air in this contest, but right now, Santos Escobar snake eyesing Ricochet in the corner. I'm sure, as we mentioned, Santos Escobar is going to be coming in with a little bit of a different plan tonight in this Cruiserweight Championship matchup since he does not have Joaquin Wilde and Raul Mendoza in his corner this evening. And meanwhile, Ricochet sending Santos Escobar. Escobar holds on. Ricochet springboard drop kick by the one and only sends Santos Escobar to the outside. The number one contender is looking good and follows it up with a corkscrew. 
the one and only taking Santos Escobar off his feet in the early going of this contest. And he can't win the championship on the outside of the ring, but that move right there is to send a message to the Cruiserweight Champion. And Ricochet is going to be coming out swinging here tonight. He's on top of the world as the number one contender, but can he get the job done from bell to bell? Takes Santos Escobar over there. He's going to follow it up with a pinfall, but Santos Escobar gets the shoulder up. Ricochet going for that shot, but Escobar able to cut him off with a couple elbows of his own. You know how physical Santos Escobar could be in that ring. It goes back to the Styles, Styles clash, which is, I should say, that we were mentioning. Ricochet's down. Escobar takes it to the air. Showing another move in his strong suit. With that big time splash, now just grounded and pounded. Santos Escobar full of ways to beat down inside of the ring. And Escobar follows it up with the German suplex. Now Ricochet has been a little bit more active inside of the ring in comparison to Santos Escobar. As we mentioned, Ricochet went through two rounds of that Cruiserweight Championship Eliminator recently on Monday Night Raw. Very physical, yet exciting for the fans. Triple threat matchup against Humberto Carrillo and Lince Dorado. And of course, that exciting contest against Isaiah Swerve Scott in the finals of the Cruiserweight Eliminator. But Ricochet fouls it up with a shooting star press right after the neck breaker. And Santos Escobar gets the shoulder up. And remember, just this past Thursday, on main event, and Ricochet went for the springboard Phoenix Splash there, but Escobar got out of the way. Very pivotal for Escobar to let Ricochet crash and burn there. That is not going to go well for the one and only in the later rounds of this contest. But what does the Cruiserweight Champion have in mind here? He's got Ricochet in the fireman's carry position, dropping him on the top rope. And that is absolutely not only going to knock the wind out of you, but possibly take you out even further. Wait a minute, Ricochet. He wakes up here and he cradles Santos Escobar up out of nowhere. But Escobar gets the shoulder off. How did Ricochet bounce back so fast? From getting dropped on the top rope. Surely the wind was taken out of him, but that's just the fire inside Ricochet. The heart and soul taken over of the number one contender here tonight. Does not want to let this opportunity pass him by. Sends Escobar into the ropes. Ricochet follows it up with a spine buster. Escobar's down. Follows it up with a shooting star press again. Ricochet's looking good in this contest. The champion's down. Ricochet's headed to the top. This time, hits a shooting star press from the tippy top rope. But Escobar gets the shoulder up. Escobar's taking a lot of offense from the one and only in this contest. You gotta give the champion credit where it's due. He is hanging in there as Ricochet goes for the mood salt, but was going for the high. High flying maneuvers one too many times. High risk and no reward on that affair. As Escobar now takes control and he is absolutely unloading on the one and only. He's grabbing a hold of the number one contender here and just drops him right on the knee. And that might be a knockout maneuver, but Ricochet gets the shoulder up. Santos Escobar is feeling it. He's got Ricochet where he wants him. No Ricochet counters. And look at that. Oh, and a nice Pele kick to the back of the head of the Cruiserweight Champion. Santos cutting Ricochet off. He sends him off into the corner. The number one contender could be in trouble, but every time I doubt Ricochet here, he's still hanging in this fight with the Cruiserweight Champion. And I gotta be honest, throughout this contest as Ricochet once again takes Santos, take Santos Escobar, excuse me, off the apron with the drop kick. I gotta say, Santos is hanging in this matchup with Ricochet, but it almost seems like he doesn't have an answer for a lot of the one and only's maneuvers. As Ricochet is really going high risk a lot in this contest. And for the most part, it's paying off for the one and only. Figured Santos came in with a plan tonight. Without Wild, the Mendoza in his corner. But regardless, Ricochet has been looking good in this Cruiserweight contest here as he just slams Santos Escobar off the top of the barricade. Ricochet showing Escobar that he can also be a little bit more physical inside of the ring. It's not just about the high flying maneuvers for Ricochet. He knows how to get the job done. He's a former United States champion and a former NXT North American champion. And he's looking to add the Cruiserweight champion. 
Cruiserweight Championship, excuse me, to his list of accolades here as he goes for the springboard, but Santos Escobar sidesteps him. Ricochet was feeling it for a few moments. He had Escobar where he wanted him, but Escobar waking up just in time, getting his surroundings right, and watches Ricochet crash and burn. And Santos Escobar has got to take advantage here while Ricochet's off his feet and try to keep the number one contender down, but Santos Escobar misses for that splash there. Now let's see what Ricochet can pin together to try to keep down Santos here. Sends him off into the corner. The one and only Escobar dodges it. This time the number one contender takes a champion over and follows it up with a drop kick. Ricochet's looking good. Santos Escobar, he could be in trouble. He's a little bit dazed. Rayman Ricochet, we call me out of nowhere on the Cruiserweight Champion. And Ricochet becomes the new WWE Cruiserweight Champion here tonight. An incredible, gutsy performance from the number one contender. Santos Escobar did everything he could to keep Ricochet down. But throughout this contest, it just seemed like he didn't have an answer for the one and only. Ricochet pulled out every trick in the book. And in the end, off the shooting star, shooting star presses. Off the dives to the outside. And off that recall knee that we just saw, the one and only is adding a new piece of hardware to his list of accolades. Here is your winner. The one and only Ricochet absolutely earned this victory here tonight. He took the fight to the champion. And now Ricochet gets the right to call himself the new Cruiserweight Champion of the World here tonight at SummerSlam. But ladies and gentlemen, coming up next, it's the long-awaited Extreme Rules contest between the charismatic Enigma Jeff Hardy and the return of the demon Finn Balor, who is going to survive when anything goes. SummerSlam is the culmination of a near three-month issue between WWE's Prince and WWE's Enigma. On March 31st, Jeff Hardy scored a victory over Finn Balor on Monday Night Raw, which handed Finn his third loss in just a matter of weeks. Balor would snap and ambush Hardy after the bell. Finn claimed that Jeff was in the wrong place at the wrong time, but Hardy wanted retribution for the assault, which led to another meeting on April 11th at Backlash. Jeff gave the fight everything he had, but a newfound aggression led to the hand of Finn Balor being raised on that night. The situation could have ended there, but Balor wanted to make a statement. He took a steel chair to the ribs of the Enigma, which only ignited the flame of Jeff Hardy even more. In the weeks that followed, Jeff Hardy and Finn Balor would take any chance available to attack the other and take the upper hand. The two men found themselves alongside AJ Styles in a triple threat match for the WWE Championship at Money in the Bank. Jeff Hardy would take the fall on that night to the phenomenal one, which sent Finn Balor over the edge. The next night on Raw, cameras cut to the back as Balor issued a beatdown on Jeff Hardy, sending him spine first through the wood of the table and crashing on the hard concrete. Jeff would gain a measure of vengeance when he surprised Balor with a steel chair over the head, costing him a match against Dominic Dijakovic on main event. Both men knew it was time to end this issue once and for all. After the assaults and weapons used on one another, it's time to officially go extreme. Jeff Hardy got the match he wanted. Extreme rules at SummerSlam. But Finn Balor upped the ante by promising it wouldn't be the Prince showing up in Phoenix. It would be the return of the Demon. Will the Demon truly rise and be deemed unstoppable? Or will the Extreme Enigma finally get what he has been searching for for the last number of months? His Extreme Retribution. An issue that started all the way back on March 31st on Monday Night Raw comes to an end here tonight, Sunday night, June 26th, right here tonight in Phoenix at SummerSlam. The charismatic enigma, Jeff Hardy, wanted to go extreme. His wish was granted, but now for the first time, he doesn't just meet the prince, he meets the demon. This is gonna be a good one. This is gonna be extreme. Jeff Hardy has been out for retribution 
for the last number of months to right the wrongs that Finn Balor bestowed upon him. The night Jeff Hardy defeated Finn Balor on Monday Night Raw and Finn Balor decided to snap and take out his aggression on the charismatic enigma. Balor may have originally stated that Jeff was in the wrong place at the wrong time, but as we've seen week after week, this rivalry between the two is far past that moment. Jeff Hardy wants to beat the hell out of Finn Balor. Balor wants to keep Jeff Hardy down for good. These two men have been hell bent on getting the last laugh over each other. But it all comes down to this here tonight. There will be no rematch after this. It's one more round between Jeff Hardy and Finn Balor. And you almost had to have this match an Extreme Rules match after a couple of weeks ago on Raw where these two men couldn't even kick off their one-on-one -on -one match because the brawl took place on the stage. And now, the man Jeff Hardy wanted and the man Finn Balor promised, the return of the demon. Finn Balor, the demon, has risen in Phoenix. And whether you like the actions in the recent months of the Prince, it is an awe-inspiring entrance. And it takes over the arena when the demon rises. Finn Balor knew that if things were going to be extreme, that if things must be come to an end, that it was time for the demon to come alive. You want to talk about a big fight feel. You want to talk about a big time matchup. Look no further than this collision right here, right now. This situation won't be settled until these two men have let loose inside the squared circle where there'll be no holds barred. No disqualifications, no countouts, no restrictions, anything goes. Jeff Hardy wants extreme. Finn Balor's bringing what he wants. This is gonna be a fight in Phoenix. And imagine what's going through the mind of Jeff Hardy as he witnesses the demon enter the arena for the very first time. It is all inspiring as we mentioned. It's bone chilling. And it's absolutely memorizing. And for the opponents of Finn Balor, it could be exactly what Finn is looking for with a mental advantage. It could clearly take them out of the game. But with Jeff Hardy's eye on retribution, and Jeff Hardy's will to want to get back at Finn Balor. Will the mind games be enough to take Jeff Hardy off the edge? You want to talk about the stage being set? It is here. It is now. And it's time for Extreme Rules. This match only ends by pinfall or submission. Absolutely anything goes, as you know. And the bell has sounded, and for the first time, Jeff Hardy meets the demon. And Jeff Hardy's got to be wondering if there's going to be any sort of difference inside the squared circle between the prince who he has met before and the demon Finn Balor. It's one thing to watch from the outside. It's another thing to be in there with the demon himself who takes Jeff Hardy right off his feet. And just imagine what Finn Balor is going to be capable of, not just as the demon, with absolutely no rules being applied here tonight. 
Jeff Hardy taking Finn Balor down. He's got to be precautious here. He's got to keep his eye on whatever the game plan is of the Demon at the moment. As Jeff Hardy goes for the shot, but there's Finn Balor so fast. He can strike you from anywhere. Once again, grabs a hold of Jeff. And drops him with that suplex. Remember the last time Finn Balor dropped Jeff Hardy with a suplex was through the, through the table in the backstage area. Nearly a month ago, where this thing really took to a new level that night. As Balor, look at this, goes for the drop kick, but Jeff Hardy dodges it. The Demon eats the canvas, and now Jeff Hardy trying to strike and move on the Demon Finn Balor. It's going to be interesting also to see who's going to be the first one to take advantage of the Extreme Rules affair here tonight. Right now, it looks like the Demon doesn't need any sort of weapons in mind as he's using the mental game and the physical damage over Jeff Hardy. But there's Jeff Hardy taking Finn once again off his feet. And Finn's down and Jeff Hardy, the charismatic enigma, is going to the outside. He wanted Extreme Rules because it's a match he knows very well. And Jeff is bringing the wood. Jeff Hardy takes out the table. As you saw before this matchup, and as we just mentioned, Finn Balor put Jeff Hardy through the wood of the table before. I'm sure Jeff Hardy's got that in mind here tonight. As this fight is now taken to the outside, and Finn Balor suplexes Jeff Hardy right down on the floor and fouls it up with an elbow. Jeff Hardy's gotta be careful, man. The demon is so dangerous. He's only been beaten on a few occasions. Finn Balor is at his most dominant, quite possibly at his best, when he dawns the paint. Finn Balor headed inside of the ring. Jeff Hardy going to go after him here. Jeff, remember, just slid in that table a moment ago, and Finn Balor with that neck breaker right down to the bottom of the table, which is going to hurt even more after Jeff Hardy falls on those steel legs. Jeff's got a fight, man. And there you see it. He doesn't want to give the advantage to Finn Balor. And Jeff going after that table that he just rung into the ring a moment ago. Oh, and he just hits Finn Balor in the back with it. You can put your opponent through the wood. He can also use the wood as a weapon. Finn Balor is down. Jeff Hardy grabbing a hold. Finn counters. And Finn Balor takes Jeff off his feet with the knees. And Finn going into the cover. And remember, for Finn, this is really about just beating Jeff Hardy one more time. And finally just one-upping Jeff Hardy to the point where Jeff Hardy doesn't come back for any more. You all saw the video package before. The entrance is here tonight of how this whole thing has progressed the last number of once. And ever since Money in the Bank, it seemingly just seems that Finn Balor just wants Jeff Hardy out of his way for good. And Jeff Hardy, look at that. Corkscrews the knee out from the Demon. And Jeff goes for the clothesline there. The Demon sidesteps him. And now Finn striking fast and striking hard on the charismatic Enigma. And now Finn Balor grabbing that table that Jeff Hardy placed in the ring a moment ago. And Jeff follows it up, grabbing a knee and a drop kick there. And lucky for Finn, the table didn't split. And Jeff Hardy going to be looking at Bring the extreme rules to this contest here. And wait a minute at the table, precariously in that corner, and a power bomb to the demon through the wood. And Jeff gonna go for the cover, looking to put Finn Balor away here, but Balor gets the shoulder up. Jeff Hardy power bomb and Finn Balor right through the wood of the table. Vengeance for over a month ago when Finn did the same to Jeff. And that DDT, and I believe Finn Balor may have hit the broken piece of the table on the way down. It's going to make for an even harder impact as Jeff is once again going to the outside of the ring. And Jeff is pulling out yet another table from underneath the ring here at Phoenix. And Finn Balor, however, comes out of the ring with the corkscrew and takes Jeff Hardy off his feet. This has been an absolute brawl back and forth since the opening bell. As Jeff takes down Finn on the outside here, and I'm going to send Finn Balor right into the barricade. 
Now the charismatic Enigma hanging up Finn Balor. And look at this, and strikes him with a knee. Excuse me, strikes him with a kick right to the head. It's a move that can cause you a concussion. It's the last thing you want in a matchup like this. As Finn's down, Jeff sends that table into the ring. Jeff's going back under the ring, however, but Finn Balor get there to cut him off. And Finn Balor almost seems to a point that he doesn't really feel the need to go after the weapons here tonight. He has been all striking in this match against Jeff Hardy. Finn Balor may be relying on the demon persona and the mind games instead of the weapons and the extreme rules factor. And opposed to Jeff Hardy, who wants to go extreme here tonight, as he's now pulling out the steel of a ladder. Jeff Hardy turning this into a tables, ladders, and chairs match, essentially, as the table's in the ring, and now with the ladders in there as well. Jeff grabbing a hold of the wood, and he strikes Finn Balor. Finn falls down on that ladder. You got all these weapons inside the ring. You got to be careful where you're landing because it's going to make the landings even more impactful as Jeff takes Finn Balor over on the ladder and Finn down and out. Oh, wait a minute. And Jeff follows it up with a moonsault, pinning Finn Balor between the ladder and himself. And that is going to be a harsh maneuver in the later rounds of this contest. You take away the rib cage of a man, it's going to be a, a lot hell of a harder to fight. Finn right there takes out Jeff. Lucky for Jeff, I think he just missed the ladder off that DDT. But Finn follows it up with a double stop. And Finn going up here, could be looking for that coup de grace, but nonetheless, Jeff Hardy's there. She's been very back and forth. And just a brawl between the men since the opening bell. As Jeff goes back to the outside, grabbing a hold of the table, but Finn Balor is right there to go after him here and takes Jeff Hardy off his feet. STO, Jeff Hardy's back, eats the floor here of the Footprint Center in Phoenix. That table's, oh, Finn Balor looking for him, just missed the table. He almost got sent right through the wood once again by Jeff Hardy. Jeff's got his eye on the table. I think he wants to send it right back into the ring where it was originally. It's a brawl here at ringside right now. We knew things were going to come to this. I mean, these brawls are what we've been witnessing for weeks between Jeff Hardy and Finn Balor. Ever since Money in the Bank it was first Finn Balor attacking Jeff. Back in the backstage area, that was Jeff Hardy hitting Finn Balor over the head with a chair. And as we mentioned earlier on, these two men were set to conclude this rivalry a number of weeks ago on Raw in a one-on-one -on -one match that never even took place as the brawl between the two men made their way from the locker room out onto the stage and Finn Balor laid out the charismatic enigma at the top of the ramp. Hence the reason why we got this Extreme Rules match tonight. Where anything goes and the only way this thing is going to end is by pinfall or submission. Jeff looking good. He's got the demon down here. He's got him in a precarious predicament. Jeff grabbing the wood of the table once again and just smacks the demon right over the head with it. Also got that ladder in the ring, Jeff Hardy. I'm sure he's got plans for that maneuver as well. As Jeff sets up the table. And Jeff has been the innovator and the initiator of the violence in this matchup as Finn is leaning up against the wood. Oh, wait a minute here. Talk about payback from a number of months ago. Jeff Hardy suplex through the table. Exactly how Finn Balor sent him through the table on Raw. Over a month ago, Jeff, wait a, minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What the hell just happened? The lights went out here in the arena. Jeff Hardy went for the ladder, the lights went out. And suddenly the demon is back in control of this contest. What the hell is going on? Coup de gras. What did we just witness? Finn Balor has defeated Jeff Hardy. What the hell just went down? Finn Balor, oh, wait, wait, wait a minute here. Finn Balor using the mind game to, oh. Oh, wait a minute, that is not good. Jeff Hardy just snapped. 
Jeff Hardy just snapped a little bit and knocked out our referee, but, but nonetheless, Finn Balor using the mind games to his advantage. Finn Balor puts the final nail in the coffin of this rivalry. It is time for our next championship contest here tonight at SummerSlam. The WWE World Tag Team Championships are up for grabs. Will the Mysterios become two-time tag team champions in their careers? We're going to find out right here, right now in Phoenix. The father and son duo of Dominic and Ray have absolutely earned this opportunity against the Viking Raiders here tonight. They own tag team victories over Alpha Academy, Legato del Fantasma, Danny Marchinoni Lorcan, they also own a number of singles victories over the last number of weeks as well over Chad Gable, Otis, as well as Grand Metalik. Dominic and Ray have been nothing short of dominant and in the winning ways week after week after week. Hence why they are awarded this World Tag Team Championship opportunity here tonight at SummerSlam. I guess the current World Tag Team Champions, Eric and Ivar, and when you want to talk about dominance, you look no further than our current champions. That makes this exciting contest a truly competitive matchup here tonight with the goal of walking out with the World Tag Team Championships here tonight at SummerSlam. But what a night it has been so far. Three incredible matches. Our fourth one coming up now and still five more contests to follow. Here tonight at the biggest party of the summer, Dominic and Ray are set for action. And here come the opponents. The war is upon us. The raid is here in Phoenix. They are your WWE World Tag Team Champions, Eric Ivar, the Viking Raiders. They originally won those Tag Team Championships on Monday Night Raw against Randy Orton and Riddle. They retained the championships at Backlash over RK Bro as well. And their next championship defense they retained the championships over Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan at Money in the Bank. And then just the weeks followed, they retained the titles over Joaquin Wilde and Raul Mendoza on main event. Eric and Ivar, every time those championships are on the line, all they do is dominate. All they do is win. But will that be the same case here tonight when they go up against Dominic and Rey Mysterio? Two teams that have been in the winning ways week after week. With the goal of walking out of Phoenix with the World Tag Team Championships around their waist. And if you're listening to the audience here at the Footprint Center, it sounds like they are in the grasp of the war. But here we go with your second championship matchup here tonight. Already tonight, Ricochet has dethroned Santos Escobar to become the new Cruiserweight Champion. Still to come tonight, the Intercontinental. Women's and WWE Championships will be on the line, but right here, right now, right here at SummerSlam, your World Tag Team Championships. Will the father and son duo become tag team champions for the second time, or will the Viking Raiders have their fourth successful title defense? And that is what it is all about right there, the World Tag Team Championships. Here we go with your next contest, the biggest party of the summer. What a night it's been so far, and it continues right now. But the World Tag Team titles on the line with Ivar and Dominic kicking us off. And Ivar immediately, that, that might have just ended the match right there with that knockout blow. Dominic gets the shoulder up, but my God. Obviously, the strength and size in this matchup goes to the Viking Raiders. So Dominic and Ray are going to have to use their strong suits here if they want to try to knock off Eric and Ivar tonight. They're going to have to go to the air and use their speed to their advantage. Something they do best. But so far, Ivar is just completely running over Dominic. Tags in Eric. And a little bit of that Viking Raiders tag team offense there. Eric, your legal man with Dominic. And ever since the bell rang... Dominic is just get, getting the hell beat out of him here. And there's a knee by Eric. And Rey Mysterio already has got to not be liking what he sees. Seeing the sun beat down inside the squared circle. And Dominic able to get Eric off him for the time being. And there's the tag. 
to the master of the 619, Rey Mysterio. Rey taking down Eric. Rey Mysterio's had a lot of great moments here at SummerSlam. A one-on-one -on -one with Eddie Guerrero back in 2005 in a match that was over the custody of Dominic Mysterio. You remember that ladder match? Wait a minute, Dominic, look at that springboard. Tornado DDT, a signature maneuver out of Dominic's arsenal there and able to take Eric off his feet. And now he's heading to the top rope and he hits the splash. And moves like that are exactly what we are saying Dominic and Ray needs to do here. Dominic goes for the cover too early to keep the Viking Raiders down, but they got the right idea so far. Stick and move and use the speed to their advantage. There's Eric cutting Dominic off there. And Eric using a little bit of speed himself. He's running at Dominic to take him off his feet. And now the ground and pound continues. And wait a minute, Dominic. Oh, wait a minute. Look at this. He shoots Eric off. And in the first few minutes of this match, Dominic Mysterio, 619 out of nowhere. It may be a little early on to keep the Viking Raiders down, but Dominic may have found the recipe for success. Follows it with a frog splash. Into the cover. Eric gets saved by his tag team partner, Ivar. If it wasn't for Ivar coming in there, we may be looking at new world tag team champions. Eric was caught in a deep moment there. Absolutely caught off guard by Dominic, hitting the 619 early on in this matchup. And following up with that frog splash, and now you see the sense of urgency from Eric. Gonna tag in Ivar, we're gonna get a little double team action. Now the fresher man is in as Eric clearly gonna need a moment to rest after taking the boots of Dominic. So close to becoming World Tag Team Champions. Now the Viking Raiders are back in control of this contest. We talked about the teams that Eric and Ivar have defeated over the last number of months. RK Bro, Danny Barcinoni, Lorcan, Legato del Fantasma. They both own singles victories over Drew Gulak the last number of weeks. So Raw, wow, out of nowhere. Did you see that maneuver from Dominic? Dominic is coming out swinging here tonight in this World Tag Team Championship matchup. Spanish Fly gonna follow it up with that Hurricane Rana as Ivar was on his knees and he eats the canvas. Wait a minute, I think he's going for it. Make it a dose by Dominic. Now that's enough to knock any man out. And look at this, Dominic Mysterio. This young man is fired up here tonight as he has taken the fight to Eric and Ivar with any chance he gets. Been in for a few minutes, he's gonna tag in the fresher man, his father, Rey Mysterio. And Rey Mysterio, even though the Viking Raiders have been dominant and they are veterans in this business, if there's anybody who's been a veteran of these big match situations more is obviously, excuse me, he's gotta be the man, Rey Mysterio. We're talking about a former multiple time world champion, tag team champion, look at that! Ivar with a shot. Goes for the splash, Rey Mysterio gets out of the way. Rey Mysterio, it's a situation there where he's using his, his speed to his advantage. Gonna follow it up with a nice DDT, and the Mysterio's here. May have knocked Ivar out for good, but Ivar gets the shoulder up. And the Mysterio's, you gotta like the offense thus far. Eric and Ivar are hanging in there, they're surviving, and they're definitely striking where it matters and hitting heavy offense over the Mysterio's, but Ryan Dominic, are doing exactly what they should in this situation. And it's using the high flying abilities and using their speed to their advantage as we saw Rey Mysterio take down Ivar with that DDT a few moments ago. Definitely shook the big man of the match. Now Ivar's trapped in the corner, Rey Mysterio's there, breaking him off, nice kick. It almost seems like Ivar can't catch Rey Mysterio right now. Rey sends the man to his corner, but Ivar able to dodge him. Look at this, man. Mysterio goes for the springboard, but Ivar out of the way there, and Ray crashed and burns off the crossbody. Now Ivar gonna tag in Eric. The Viking Raiders gonna do what they do best. A little bit of the tag team offense there. And Mysterio may have just been squashed in the middle of this ring as Ivar, there should be Eric went to the cover, but Ray Mysterio gets the shoulder up. And Ray taking some beatings here. Dominic's had a few moments to rest. Father's gonna be looking to tag in the sun. Wait a minute, Rey Mysterio. Look at that, out of nowhere. With the scissor on Eric, follows it up with a DDT. And wait a minute, Rey Mysterio 
sends Eric into the ropes, and once again, Phoenix becomes 619. Oh, oh, and Eric's been busted wide open. The tip of the boot catches Rey Mysterio. The 619, Eric's been busted open, luckily for him. Able to kick out, but barely there. That's the second 619 that Eric has eaten in this contest. One from Dominic and one from the Master Ray. As we mentioned, Eric clearly catching the tip of the boot of Ray Mysterio as his forehead has been busted open here. And Phoenix is smelling blood for the second time here tonight. It ain't just the war paint on the face of Eric. That is the blood trickling from the forehead as Ray Mysterio. Famous are from behind. Ray going to the top rope. Gonna follow it up, Hurricane Rana. And the Mysterios are all over the Viking Raiders right now. Eric tags in Ivar. Ray tags in Dominic. Ivar takes him down with a clothesline. Now Dominic goes for the springboard tornado DDT. Ivar sidesteps it, now he tags Ray back in. Ray Mysterio. It's the scissors once again with the DDT. Man, Eric and Ivar are hanging in, but I gotta say the challengers have been more in control of this contest for the most part as Ray hits the frog splash. And we're gonna have new World Tag Team Champions here, but Ivar gets the shoulder up. Man, how close are Dominic and Ray becoming? Becoming World Tag Team Champions. As Ray is down and the big man is going to the top, could've been looking for that splash. We've seen Ivar Win matches in the past with that splash from the top rope. Hell, that's the maneuver that won the Viking Raiders the World Tag Team Championship several months ago. Rey Mysterio there. Takes Ivar down once again. And Ivar going to flee to the outside. The Viking Raiders in desperate need of a regrouping situation. As Rey and Dominic have been all over the Viking Raiders for the majority of this contest. And Rey getting back into the ring. Ivar out, out running the man there. That may have been a knockout blow to drag the momentum back in the corner of Eric and Ivar. The World Tag Team Champions need to start pinning together some big time maneuvers and we get into championship rounds in this contest, especially with Eric showing the battle wounds. And Ivar with another knockout blow. He's going to go for the cover on Ray. Will that be enough? But not yet. Not yet as Ray Mysterio gets the shoulder up. As Ivar going to hit the ropes, a big time splash, and that's enough to crack the ribs of any normal man, but Rey Mysterio gets the shoulder up in the last second. And Ivar scouting Rey here. Mysterio may be dazed and confused, he's on the shoulders of Ivar, and he may have been cut in half off that gut buster. Ivar to the cover. The Viking Raiders going to retain the World Tag Team Championships, but Rey once again gets the shoulder up. Rey Mysterio is hanging in there as Ivar seemingly is getting to the top rope for the big time splash. A for the elbow, but Rey gets out of the way. Fouls it up with the DDT, enough to take Ivar down momentarily. Rey right into the cover. Are we going to have new champions? Eric breaks it up. And look at this, Dominic's in there. And this match is starting to break down as Dominic and Eric are now heading to the outside. And we're left with the two legal men inside the ring. No tag team partners to be found. Rey Mysterio is down. The big man's heading back up to the top rope. He could be looking for that splash. But Rey Mysterio gets the knees up. Rey gets the knees up on Ivar. Ivar's down to a knee. And Rey with the blockbuster takes him down. Mysterio's heading back out to the apron. Springboard. Brock splash by Rey. And Ivar may be in trouble. The Mysterios have captured the World Tag Team Championships here tonight. What a tag team matchup here tonight at SummerSlam. Dominic and Ray, clearly the aggressors on this night. And no matter what the Viking Raiders threw at the Mysterios, kind of similar to our Cruiserweight Championship match earlier tonight, the champions had no answer for the challengers. Ray and Dominic throwing everything in the kitchen sink at Eric and Ivar here tonight. And in the end... Here are your winners, the team of Dominic and Ray Mysterio. And in the end, it was enough to keep the Viking Raiders down. And for the second time in their careers, the father and son duo, Dominic 
and Rey Mysterio have captured the World Tag Team Championships. Man, what a night it has been at SummerSlam. Two of five championship matches down and two new champions crowned here tonight. Phoenix has been on fire. What a night it has been. The Mysterios are the new WWE World Tag Team Champions. Well, this raucous night in Phoenix continues. Will the Apex Predator get his revenge against the almighty Bobby Lashley? These two men are on our collision course, and they're going one on one up next. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. The almighty Bobby Lashley has arrived. A situation that has blown out of proportion the last number of weeks set to come to a head here tonight at SummerSlam. This all started between Bobby Lashley and Randy Orton over a month ago on Monday Night Raw where Randy Orton's tag team partner Riddle, one half of RK Bro, was found knocked out cold in the parking garage. Randy Orton believes that the Hurt Business, more specifically Bobby Lashley was the one who put his hands on Riddle. He believes so because Riddle, weeks prior, had defeated Bobby Lashley in a Money in the Bank qualifying matchup, handing Bobby Lashley his second big time loss just weeks after Lashley had lost the WWE Championship to AJ Styles back on April 11th at Backlash. Bobby Lashley denies those claims, says he got what he wanted, his win back, and that Hurt Business versus RK Bro tag team main event on Raw a number of weeks ago. Randy Orton still believes, however, but the almighty one was behind all of this. Warren has been on a collision course. He's ran through the Hurt Business week after week. But Bobby Lashley is last on his checklist here tonight. And here comes the Viper. Week after week, Randy Orton has been on the hunt for the Hurt Business. It started with Shelton Benjamin. It continued with Cedric Alexander. This past week on main event, he took out MVP. It's all in the lead up for Randy Orton to finally get his hands on the almighty Bobby Lashley, the man he wanted the night he found Riddle knocked out in the parking lot. Lashley avoided Randy Orton on that night, but promised Orton would get the hurt put on him for putting the name of the hurt business as well as Lashley in his mouth. That is when this all took place. That is when Shelton Benjamin was sent to fight Randy Orton. And that's when Randy Orton's hunt continued on the Hurt Business. And week after week has been building up to this moment. Randy Orton wants to get his hands on Bobby Lashley and avenge his friend, avenge his tag team partner, the other half of RK Bro, Matt Riddle, who I'm sure is watching at home, hoping Randy Orton does right by him here tonight at SummerSlam. It has been an exciting night thus far here tonight. Two championships changing hands. John Cena defeated Austin Theory. The demon Finn Balor puts the final nail in the rivalry against Jeff Hardy and Extreme Rules. But now we're here with another personal vendetta to be settled. The almighty Bobby Lashley, who's been searching for that big win that he has been falling short of month after month. On the other hand, Randy Orton, as we mentioned, is out for revenge. And he's out to avenge Riddle. Right here tonight in Phoenix, Lashley and Orton. Let's get things underway here at SummerSlam. Randy Orton immediately throwing the lefts, throwing the rights, just as he has against every member of the Hurt Business thus far. The ground and pound beatdowns of the Apex Predator. And remember, as we mentioned a few moments ago, as much as Lashley wants to put the hurt on Randy Orton for speaking the name of the Hurt Business. Lashley, on the other hand, has got his own personal, I don't want to say vendetta, but issue he needs to take care of, and that's getting the big win that he has been searching for the last number of months as Lashley takes down Orton. As we mentioned, ever since Lashley lost the WWE Championship to AJ Styles, he followed it up with yet another big loss, and that Money in the Bank qualifier to Riddle on Monday Night Raw, which is what Randy Orton believes started this whole situation to begin with. Lashley's back in action here tonight. In singles contest against Randy Orton, one of the biggest pay-per-views of the year. He wants to shut Randy Orton up in his eyes, and he also wants that victory. And Orton's really trying to unload on Lashley, but Lashley's trying to cut down the Viper here. 
Actually grabbing a hold of the Apex Predator. And now using his strength to his advantage. He's got Orton over his head. Waited too long, though. And now Orton. Nice uppercut to the back of the head. A brutal shot from the Apex Predator. Orton has ran through the Hurt Business week after week. It started with Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander. MVP this past week on main event. Ashley is le last, I should say, on the checklist of Randy Orton here. Orton missing for that shot. Bobby Lashley grabbing a hold of the Apex Predator and just trying to crack a rib or two on the way down. Bobby Lashley goes for an un uncharacteristic drop kick there. Randy Orton had it scouted. And a nice uppercut. Orton's whole strategy throughout this matchup has just been throwing lefts and rights. And every shot he can at Bobby Lashley. And now he's going back to the well, but Bobby Lashley counters this time. And she's got that MMA background, able to counter Randy Orton and get a couple of shots in of his own. And Randy Orton's down, and Bobby Lashley's feeling himself here in Phoenix. But he better keep his eye on Randy Orton, because Randy Orton's right there. And he wants to beat down Lashley. Lashley goes for the shot. Orton counters and takes Lashley off his feet. It's been a brawl since the get-go here. Lashley counters Randy Orton. Nice knee to the gut. Bobby Lashley with a shot. Lashley grabbing a hold. Sending Randy Orton to the corner. Lashley wants to put the hurt on Randy Orton. He's going to do so here. Nice forearm shot, like it or not. May have just knocked Randy Orton out cold. And now Lashley using his strength to his advantage yet again. And Snake Eyes is Orton into the corner. Lashley looking to shut up Randy Orton after weeks and weeks of Orton trying to hunt down the Hurt Business. Lashley, remember, he kind of got dragged into this thing because Randy Orton believes he is innocent in the attack. Or excuse me, that Bobby Lashley is the one who attacked Lashley. Lashley believes he is innocent. Actually pointed the finger at Randy Orton at one point. Regardless, though, we're here to settle the score. And somebody's going to be shut up once and for all here. Tonight is Lashley slapping Randy Orton. Orton not taken very kindly to that, though. A couple of shots of his own. Back and forth we go here, and Orton cuts him off with a drop kick. And Randy Orton, look at this. Sick and sadisted is the Apex Predator stomping away on the almighty one here at SummerSlam. I'm going to follow it up with that vintage knee drop from Orton. Lashley's down. Orton once again is going for that vicious punches. He's been using against Benjamin. He used against Cedric. And he used against MVP. He's trying to put the hurt on the hurt business themselves. And Randy Orton so cold and calculated. Sends Lashley into the corner. Wait a minute, sending Lashley up. I think we may know what Randy Orton's going for here. He did this a number of weeks ago to Cedric Alexander. Lashley might be in trouble here. Orton's grabbing a hold. Lashley in a precarious predicament. RKO from the top rope from the Apex Predator. Orton lands the RKO flush. And into the cover goes the Viper. Randy Orton picks up the win here tonight at SummerSlam. It wasn't a long fight, but it was a brutal one. Lashley and Orton beating the hell out of each other the last number of minutes, but Randy Orton gets what he wanted. He shut up Bobby Lashley, and in his eyes, avenged the attack on his tag team partner Riddle. What an RKO to end this contest here tonight. Orton gets what he was looking for the last number of weeks, and that's vengeance over the almighty Bobby Lashley. And I'm sure Riddle is watching at home with a smile from ear to ear, watching his tag team partner do one good by Riddle. A fight here tonight at SummerSlam as Randy Orton runs through the Hurt Business and knocks off the final boss, Bobby Lashley, in the biggest party of the summer. Orton destroys the Hurt Business and he picks up the win here tonight at SummerSlam.
Well, the action continues here at SummerSlam right here, right now, with the inner Continental Championship on the line. A triple threat affair, two challengers, one dominant champion, and a whole lot of writing on this contest here. And making his entrance first, a man who has been searching for that big time victory for a number of months. He's looking to get back in the winning ways and put a championship around his waist for the first time in quite some time here in the WWE. The Scottish psychopath, Drew McIntyre, is gonna be hell bent while walking out of Phoenix with the gold here this evening. Introducing the challenger from Air Scotland, weighing in at 254 pounds, Drew McIntyre. We've talked a lot in recent weeks about how Drew McIntyre has been coming up short in these big time matches. It all started back in March when he failed to win the WWE Championship number one contenders tournament. It followed up with a loss to Edge in a Money in the Bank qualifying matchup. He faced Sheamus back at Money in the Bank, but came up short on that occasion as well. He gets an opportunity once again here tonight, but not without another task in front of him. And introducing the challenger from Birmingham, England, weighing in at 205 pounds, the Bruiser weighs Pete Dunne. That other task and that other roadblock in Drew McIntyre's way is this man, the former NXT United Kingdom Champion, the Bruiserweight Pete Dunne, who is yet to be pinned and yet to be made to submit since making his debut on the main roster back at Backlash. Every time Pete Dunne steps in the ring, he's been getting his hand raised in the end. Remember the last time we saw Pete Dunne and Drew McIntyre inside of that squared circle? They were on the same side of things in a tag team matchup a number of weeks ago against Danny Burch and Ernie Lorcan. But remember back to how Pete Dunne got added to this Intercontinental Championship match. That was after he defeated the Scottish psychopath Drew McIntyre at a one-on-one -on -one occasion on Monday Night Raw. Of course, McIntyre pinned the Intercontinental Champion Sheamus in another tag team matchup a number of weeks ago, which started this whole triple threat situation to begin with here tonight at SummerSlam. We have our two challengers, but here comes the man who has been dominant as the Intercontinental Champion. Multiple title defenses under his belt. Will he get a third here tonight? Two big challengers, but a big champion is on the way. And introducing the champion from Dublin, Ireland, weighing in at 267 pounds. He is the WWE Intercontinental Champion, the Celtic Warrior, Sheamus! Sheamus won that Intercontinental Championship back on April 11th at Backlash by defeating Shinsuke Nakamura. He has retained the championship twice, once against Drew McIntyre back in Philadelphia at Money in the Bank as we mentioned. He also retained the championship a couple of weeks ago on Monday Night Raw in that main event matchup against Dominic Dijakovic. Sheamus has looked good every time the championship's on the line. But remember, the whole reason that started this triple threat matchup was when Drew McIntyre pinned the Intercontinental Champion's shoulders to the mat in that tag team matchup at over weeks ago on main event. But here we are tonight. Two challengers and one champion, and the gold is on the line. The prestigious Intercontinental Championship. You think about all the legendary Intercontinental Championship matches here at SummerSlam. You look back to Bret Hart versus Mr. Perfect in 1991 in Madison Square Garden. What about the following year when it was Bret Hart and Davey Boy Smith, the British Bulldog, 1992 in Wembley. Other years as well, such as Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon in a ladder match in 1995 in Pittsburgh. So many matches along the way, and I bet you can add another here tonight. The bruiserweight Pete Dunne being the aggressor since the opening bell. McIntyre's down and out as the Celtic Warrior taking his eye off the ball momentarily. And that's not going to be a good strategy for my eyes for the Celtic Warrior Sheamus. Everybody knows the rules of the triple threat affairs. The champion does not have to be pinned in this situation to lose the Intercontinental Championship. 
And Drew McIntyre, as we mentioned, he's lost in recent weeks to the Bruiserway Pete Dunne. McIntyre has also defeated Sheamus. Sheamus has defeated Drew McIntyre in the past. A whole lot of writing over the last month or so between these three men. But tonight is where it matters. We've been talking about it all night long. It's about getting W's inside of the ring. Building momentum for yourself. In this case, bringing home the gold. With Pete Dunne, Drew McIntyre, and Sheamus in there. These guys are going to be fighting tooth and nail and beating the hell out of each other throughout this contest. I rest assure you for the Intercontinental Championship. And McIntyre's down and out, and this is where things become interesting in a triple threat matchup, when the match seemingly becomes a one-on-one -on -one matchup, at least for a few moments. It becomes a big opportunity for the superstars in the ring to try to gain the advantage on the other and possibly score the win, while one of the other opponents is out for the count. You also got to think about watching your back in situations like that and try to have eyes in the back of your head as there's Drew McIntyre coming in and grabbing a hold of Pete Dunne. The Bruiserweight's eyes were off the ball, or at least focused on Sheamus momentarily, and Drew McIntyre taking advantage. And McIntyre and Sheamus going out of here. McIntyre slams him down. Those two men got a lot of history with each other, former friends, now bitter enemies. And now with the Intercontinental Championship at stake, I think unintentionally teaming up there on Pete Dunne as McIntyre sent him for a ride. Sheamus followed up with the kick, but now they're back to beating each other up. It almost seems like McIntyre and Sheamus, even though Pete Dunne has been an aggressor in this contest, McIntyre and Sheamus definitely want to get at each other. As Pete Dunne working over Drew McIntyre, now the champion is out of the ring, and this is where things once again become interesting. Because the champion could lose the title without having to be involved in the finish. And oh, I believe Drew McIntyre may have just gotten cut open off that sharp elbow drop from the bruiserway Pete Dunn. And Dunn grabbing a hold, able to get the big man up off that snap suplex there. The Intercontinental Champion's back in it, grabbing a hold of Pete Dunn. Oh, look at this. Double backbreakers going for a third. And Pete Dunn may be broken in half off that maneuver. What a night it has been at SummerSlam thus far. We've seen Ricochet become the new Cruiserweight Champion. We've seen the Mysterios take home the World Tag Team titles. Will we have a third new champion here tonight in our third of five championship matches here tonight at SummerSlam? McIntyre working over Sheamus. Pete Dunne down and out. Look at that. Sheamus able to grab a hold. Take Drew McIntyre off his feet. Of course, still to come tonight in our other championship affairs. The WWE Women's Championship going to be on the line. Wait a minute, Pete Dunne with the bridge. But Drew McIntyre is right there to break it up. It's the dangers of a triple threat matchup right there. As McIntyre grabbing a hold. Wait a minute, future shock DDT on the bruiser weight. McIntyre takes him out. He doesn't elect for the cover just yet. I think he may be going for the Claymore, but he had his back turned, and here comes Sheamus. And Sheamus being in the ring right there, definitely costing Drew McIntyre an opportunity to close this matchup out and take home the Intercontinental Championship of the World. Now McIntyre's down, Sheamus and Pete Dunne unintentionally once again. We're seeing strange alliances, at least momentarily formed in this triple threat matchup as the Bruiserweight and the Celtic Warrior are going at it now. And Sheamus, look at that nice shot with the Axe Hammer. McIntyre's down on the outside. Sheamus has a chance here to put the Bruiserweight away, but we know how tough Pete Dunne is. As we mentioned when he was making his way to the ring earlier this evening, Pete Dunne yet to be pinned or made to submit in his run on the main roster thus far. His only loss technically comes in an over-the-top rope battle royal, which of course he was eliminated in. The same way Sheamus just got thrown over the top rope there, but of course Pete Dunne again, not pinned or made to submit in that contest. Yet to have that blemish on his record. Which is why he's been so impressive since making his main roster debut officially at the Backlash pay-per-view. We're back on April 11th against Apollo Crews. And did you see that there? McIntyre saw an opportunity to go for the Claymore kick. But Sheamus was down and Pete Dunne dodged it. Nice side by the Bruiser right there. But McIntyre still got life left in. And we know how tough Drew McIntyre is. Now wait a minute here, look at this, we're going to see another strange alliance as Sheamus and McIntyre double team Pete Dunne there with the double backbreaker. The Bruiserweight goes down and now Sheamus and McIntyre do what they do best, wait a minute. Sheamus sending McIntyre over the top rope, big time powerbomb, and both challengers are down and out on the outside of the ring. The Intercontinental Champion in control of this championship affair here at SummerSlam. 
As Pete Dunn trying to grab a hold of Sheamus and take momentum back for himself. Takes out the leg of the Intercontinental Champion and able to take Drew McIntyre off his feet with that clothesline. This brawl, or I should say this triple threat match has turned into a brawl here at ringside. Right here tonight, the Footprint Center in Phoenix. Sheamus grabbing a hold of McIntyre. Wait a minute, look at this. Look at that sit-out powerbomb. Almost a choke slam maneuver at the same time. The Scottish psychopath goes down, but they have to fight and Drew McIntyre able to push Sheamus off momentarily. Now these guys just throwing each other around ringside, and this is where things get extra dangerous. You don't want to risk injury on the outside of the ring, especially in a match of this magnitude with such stakes on the line. Pete Dunne and Drew McIntyre back into the ring. The Intercontinental Champion's going to follow. He's still going to watch McIntyre there. As McIntyre, and I believe Sheamus at the same time, went for the bro kick. As McIntyre went for the Claymore kick. But there's Sheamus. Hits McIntyre right in the wound with the kick. But Pete Dunne there, able to ensure that there was no cover. Chaos in this triple threat matchup as McIntyre continues to gush from the forehead. And Pete Dunne with the clothesline. Takes Drew McIntyre off his feet again. McIntyre down and out. The Bruiserweight's looking good right there. And able to take down the Intercontinental Champion, Sheamus. McIntyre's down. Pete Dunne has got his eyes on a beaten and bloody Scottish psychopath. Wait a minute, Dunne's grabbing a hold, looking for that pump handle slam. McIntyre face first into the canvas. And Pete Dunne has become your new Intercontinental Champion! A snot nose in your face! Beat the hell out of each other! Triple threat matchup here tonight! And through all the blood, and through all the fists flying, Pete Dunne is walking away with the gold! The Intercontinental Champion, Sheamus, down and out, not able to break up the pinfall! Pete Dunne adding a new championship to his accolades here in the WWE. Former NXT United Kingdom Champion, former NXT Tag Team Champion, and now he gets the right to call himself the brand new Intercontinental Champion. What a fight here tonight. McIntyre goes down, but Pete Dunne is leaving Phoenix with the gold. Well, ladies and gentlemen, coming up next here at SummerSlam, a grudge will be settled once and for all when Mustafa Ali and the Messiah Seth Rollins are locked inside the confines of a cold, hard steel cage. What is going to happen when these two meet one more time right here up next? The self-proclaimed Messiah of the WWE has been on a mission for months to rid himself of failure. Failure that occurred because of one spring night in Albuquerque, New Mexico, in the midst of a WWE Championship number one contenders tournament. The Messiah took on a hungry Mustafa Ali, who was looking to right the wrongs of the last several years of his WWE career. On that night, a relentless Ali battled Seth Rollins to the very end, where he successfully won the match via submission. This left a bad taste in the mouth of the former multiple-time world champion, who decided to take Ali's eye off the ball while he competed in the semi-finals of said tournament. Ali came up short in defeat, and what did Rollins in the ring once again? The Messiah, along with his disciple Murphy, took on Mustafa Ali in a returning Dominic Dijakovic at Backlash, which led to another victory for Ali and company. Seth Rollins had another chance to fight back on Raw in a Money in the Bank qualifying match a few weeks later. But even through all Rollins had, and distractions left and right from Murphy, Ali still found a way to get the job done. As Ali shifted focus towards the Money in the Bank, Rollins had disappeared for weeks. That was until the Messiah resurfaced to remind Mustafa Ali that they still had unfinished business. This wasn't the first time Rollins snuck from behind, as recently on Raw, Rollins used the surroundings to his advantage and issued an assault in the interview position. Because of this attack, Ali has been home nursing injuries for weeks, so the question remains, will Ali be 100% coming into SummerSlam? He has been a thorn in the side of Seth Rollins for months, but no matter how many times Ali gets the upper hand, Rollins keeps coming back for more. The Messiah won't be satisfied until he puts the final nail in the coffin of Ali on his own terms. These issues have been dragged along far enough. It's time to have one true loser and one true winner. When these two men are locked inside the confines of a solid steel cage, who will be the last man standing and who will truly be 
victorious. The cage begins to lower, and the Monday Night Messiah of the WWE embrace the visionary. Like him or not, Seth Rollins is in the head of Mustafa Ali. Mustafa Ali may not be coming into this match 100% tonight, which absolutely puts the odds in the favor of the visionary, Seth freaking Rollins. The following contest is a steel cage match. Making his way to the ring from Davenport, Iowa. Weighing in at 217 pounds, Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins has been hell-bent and unable to move forward with his career until he can, in his mind, right the wrongs of his original loss to Mustafa Ali. And it wasn't just that loss that truly sent Seth Rollins to the place we see him now. It was one after another after another for the Messiah. Mustafa Ali has had the number of Seth Rollins for months here in the WWE. And Seth Rollins finally snapped after that Money in the Bank qualifier that you just saw in the highlights. This thing is going to a personal level. And Mustafa Ali believes it's gone far enough. And it's time to end things here tonight with himself and Seth Rollins are locked inside the cage. And his opponent from Chicago, Illinois, weighing in at 182 pounds, Mustafa Ali. Mustafa Ali has been driving down a new path for the last several months. As we mentioned, Seth Rollins trying to right the wrongs of his losses to Mustafa Ali. Ali's whole envision from the beginning was trying to right the wrongs of the last few years of his career and trying to gain the respect back to the audience and try to build himself back up here in the WWE. And it all started with that win over Seth Rollins in that number one contenders tournament back in March. And as you saw, it was Seth Rollins who took Mustafa Ali's eye off the ball in that tournament, which really sent this whole issue between these two men into a snowball effect. But it all comes down to this. Right here, right now, from the Footprint Center in Phoenix, Arizona. The rivalry that started months ago on Monday Night Raw now concludes here at SummerSlam inside the steel cage. And we are underway, and Ali is going to be fired up to get his hands on the Monday Night Messiah. But Rollins takes over Ali. And Ali, of course, as we mentioned, there's no possible way he could be coming in 100% here tonight. It was just two weeks ago on Monday Night Raw where Seth Rollins absolutely beat the hell out of Mustafa Ali and then some back in the interview position. Absolutely hitting him with multiple maneuvers, hitting him with the steel cage, or excuse me, the steel chair. Seth, Roll oh, Seth Rollins slipping off the top rope there. Well, that's, gonna, that's gonna go well for Mustafa Ali, but Rollins right there to luckily retrace his steps. So as we were mentioning, Seth Rollins using that steel chair over Mustafa Ali in the backstage area and then just slamming Mustafa Ali's head Face first on the concrete. Again, it was because of that assault that Ali! My God, just hits the cage for the first time in the contest. It was because of that assault that Mustafa Ali hasn't been seen in the last two weeks. Was home nursing injuries. It's his first match back here tonight. And being the first one to hit the steel cage is not going to go well for him. But of course, Mustafa Ali is tough and he will dig down deep. A man who we have... Kind of ignited as the heart and the soul sometimes of the WWE as Ali, look at this. Sunset flip to Rollins. We're gonna put Seth Rollins away there, but it ain't just about winning for Mustafa Ali tonight. Because that is something he has done over Seth Rollins a number of times over the last couple of months. It's constantly win over the Messiah. Tonight for Mustafa Ali is about revenge over Seth Rollins after Rollins took this rivalry to a personal level a number of weeks ago. Seth Rollins, though, it's about putting Mustafa Ali out for good. As Ali, wait a minute here. Look at that, sending Seth Rollins face first into the steel cage. A measure of payback for the assault a number of weeks ago. Two men with different vendettas going in this one. As we were mentioning, it's all for Seth Rollins about putting Mustafa Ali out for good and finally being able to prove that he can 
beat Mustafa Ali. And whether that's prove it to himself or prove it to the WWE Universe, he wants to do it one way or another. Rollins with that ripcord knee. We don't know the extent of Mustafa Ali's injuries from a couple of weeks ago. We don't know if there was a measure of a concussion or what. We just know Ali was banged up. But moves like that. Oh, wait a minute. Ali trying to send Rollins into the cage here. Rollins able to block it. And Rollins here going to look. Suplex, no. Falcon Arrow sends Mustafa Ali down on the mat. But again, we don't know the, the extent of Mustafa Ali's injuries from a number of weeks ago. We know he was banged up leaving the arena that night. He's basically sentenced to, to bed rest for a number of weeks as Rollins goes into the cover on Mustafa Ali, trying to put him away here, but Ali gets the shoulder up. And I'm sure Mustafa Ali, in his mind, isn't going to be looking to end this thing right away as Rollins comes from the top with the elbow drop to the back. And you got to think for Seth Rollins, as much as he wants to defeat Mustafa Ali once and for all and prove that he can defeat him here tonight, I'm sure Rollins at the same time in some cold and calculated way, wants to beat the hell out of Mustafa Ali to truly put him on the shelf for good here tonight. And Mustafa Ali, nice swinging neck breaker to take Rollins off his feet. And remember, these two were set for just a one-on-one -on -one singles matchup here tonight. Just a straight-up wrestling match, but it was that attack in the locker room, or excuse me, backstage in the interview position a number of weeks ago. And it was after that that this match was issued to be inside a steel cage so there'd be nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. And we'd finally get a solid winner here tonight. And we mentioned it on Monday Night Raw this past week. We've mentioned it a number of times, but this match here tonight, not the normal steel cage rules. No escape in this contest. The cage is there to simply keep these men inside to determine one true winner and one true loser. This match must end by pinfall or submission here tonight. Ali looking good off that super kick and a number of offense. Now going to come from the middle rope and hits the splash on Rollins. Stop Ali starting to battle back against Rollins as far, who's been the aggressor for the majority of this contest. Ali's got him up. It sends him down to the canvas below. A bit of an innovative offense from Mustafa Ali. Ali sending Rollins into the corner. Again, for Ali, this is about getting payback from a number of weeks ago as Rollins is in a precarious predicament here. Ali coming from the top. Nice Frankensteiner sending Seth Rollins halfway across the ring. And now Ali's got something in mind. He's heading up. He's scaling the cage on the top rope. What's Ali going for? Goes for the elbow drop from a different position. Assisted from the steel cage, but Rollins got out of the way. And Rollins here grabbing a hold. Pedigree to Mustafa Ali. Rollins finally going to be able to put Ali down. But Ali gets the shoulder up. And Seth Rollins in disbelief, but he should know by now how tough Mustafa Ali is inside that ring. He's got another gear. He's got a second and a third gear that a lot of superstars do not have. That's why we refer to him as the heart and the soul many times in the WWE. And that is what has credited Mustafa Ali to beating Rollins in the past. Mustafa Ali, he defeated Seth Rollins all the way back in March in that number one contenders tournament. And as you saw in the video package prior to this contest, the next meeting between the two was that tag team matchup at the Backlash pay-per-view. We saw Mustafa Ali and Dominic Dijakovic take down Seth Rollins and his disciple Murphy. And it was, of course, that Money in the Bank qualifying matchup a few weeks later. And Mustafa Ali won again. Rollins trying to put away Ali again here. Ali gets the shoulder up. And also remember, there was a six-man tag team matchup on main event. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Rollins. Curb stomp to Mustafa Ali. And that is going to do it for Seth Rollins here. No, Mustafa Ali is hanging in the fight. Ali digging down deep, kicking into another gear. That is what we refer to for Mustafa Ali, not looking to fall to Seth Rollins here tonight. After everything Ali has been through by the hands of Seth Rollins, if there's ever a night to get that victory, it's right here or right now at SummerSlam as Ali eats the turnbuckle. And Ali trying to bounce back with that drop kick, but Rollins sidesteps it here. Ali still got fighting him though. Hurricane Rana taking Seth Rollins off his feet. As we are mentioning, there was a six-man tag team matchup on main event about a month ago here as Mustafa Ali once again, look at this, going to scale the cage. Rollins is getting to his feet. Ali drops the elbow and takes Seth Rollins off his feet. 
Impressive maneuver from Mustafa Ali. Ali springboard hits that senton. And that was another win for Mustafa Ali. That six-man tag team match on main event. Mustafa Ali, Mansoor, and the WWE Champion AJ Styles picked up the win over Austin Theory, Murphy, and Seth Rollins. So that's four losses in the book for Seth Rollins against Mustafa Ali. And Ali here, look at this. Taking Rollins off his feet. Nice maneuver. Again for Mustafa Ali, of course. He wants to get his hand raised tonight. Of course he wants to beat Seth Rollins again. But after Rollins took things to a personal level, Ali decides to do the same. Did you see the low blow there? Not something you usually see out of Mustafa Ali, but after everything these men have been through, Ali's looking for payback. And now he's locking in that Koji clutch, dead center of the ring. Rollins with nowhere to go, low blow, followed by a submission. Ali has tapped out Seth Rollins to this maneuver before. But this time, Rollins has a way out of it, able to elbow Mustafa Ali right in the corner of the eye there. And again, Mustafa Ali has put Seth Rollins away with that Koji clutch before back in their initial meeting back in March. Ali headed to the top, drops the elbow on Rollins. And he's going to follow it up with the cover here. And oh, and Seth Rollins at 2.9 getting the shoulder up there. That was a close call for the Messiah. You can't imagine how Seth Rollins is going to react here if he takes a fifth loss in a row to Mustafa Ali. As Rollins bounces up with the swing blade. And Ali bounces up with the clothesline. These guys are reaching a fire under them right now. Rollins down. Mustafa Ali is game planning his next maneuver. He wants to get that victory, but he wants to beat the hell out of Seth Rollins and gain his payback in doing so. As wait a minute, Rollins here grabbing a hold. Mustafa Ali eats the knee right to the ribs. Rollins going for the cover. He could have just knocked the wind out of Ali long enough, but Ali gets the shoulder up. Ali's got to be careful here, man. He's taking a lot of big time maneuvers from Rollins. Rollins, look at this. Grappled up Mustafa Ali. Sending him down to the canvas. It was only a few minutes ago in this contest for Rollins. He hit that pedigree. Just a few moments later, he hit that curb stomp from Mustafa Ali. Ali's also eating the canvas, or excuse me, eating the cage in this matchup. He's definitely got some damage put on him. Not saying that Rollins doesn't either. But Ali has definitely taken the more impactful maneuvers in this contest. As Rollins, look at that! Forearm to the back of the head. And that might have knocked Ali out cold for good. Rollins not able to put away Ali yet. Remember that forearm to the back of the head was one of the maneuvers that knocked Ali out in the backstage area a number of weeks ago. And again, we don't know the degree of Mustafa Ali's injuries on that night as he takes down Rollins with the Tornado DDT. But any shots to the neck and head area has got to be wary on Mustafa Ali. Again, we don't know if he was diagnosed with any sort of concussion or if it was just a couple of bumps and bruises, but nonetheless, he's of course been cleared here to compete tonight against Seth Rollins. But as we talked about, we don't know the extent of his injuries here as Mustafa Ali is feeling it right now against the Messiah. Ali grabbing a hold. Rollins is dazed here. This could be the opportunity for Mustafa Ali to put Seth Rollins away for good. Look at this, wraps around. Nice swing out DDT. And Rollins is down. Mustafa Ali yet again in this contest is heading up to the top. He's eyeing up Rollins. Mustafa Ali with the big time splash from the top. Almost superfly Jimmy Snooker style in the cage. Ali springboard hits that senton again. And Rollins is got to be worried here, man. Ali is really starting to kick into a new gear and hit some of that high exhilarating offense. Rollins has had a lot of time to prepare for this matchup and study what went wrong against Mustafa Ali on the previous occasions. He's got to be wary of Mustafa Ali's best offense. He got out of that Koji clutch earlier, so clearly Rollins has done his homework. Mustafa Ali hit that Frankenstein earlier in this matchup. Rollins making sure he can't hit it again and takes him out with the basic but yet effective DDT. Rollins eyeing up Mustafa Ali. Oh, could have been looking maybe for a pedigree there. Mustafa Ali caught it, but Rollins instead able to hit him with that Instaguri. Now Ali has absolutely got a couple marbles loose at the moment. Down on the knee, Seth Rollins go behind. Oh, what a kick to the back of the head. 
And if all the previous maneuvers didn't knock out Ali, that might have been the final blow. But Ali somehow, some way, gets the shoulder off the canvas yet again. And Mustafa Ali has got a fire lit under him here tonight. After being at home watching Seth Rollins the last number of weeks, remember Rollins is coming into this match with a win this past Monday night alongside Murphy in that tag team matchup against AJ Styles and Edge. Rollins with the momentum coming in here tonight. Mustafa Ali is coming in just with the fire and the rage against Rollins as he hits that big time signature dropkick does Ali. And Rollins has got to be in trouble here, man. Mustafa Ali is kicking into a new gear. Rollins is down. Mustafa Ali is headed up to the second rope. Yet again, hits a splash. That's multiple dives here. Rollins could have a broken rib throughout this contest. Oh, 5 4 for Mustafa Ali. And Mustafa Ali puts the final nail on the canvas of this long and hard road against the Messiah Seth Rollins. A story that we have watched written over the last number of months. Here tonight, June 26, the Footprint Center in Phoenix, Arizona. The biggest party of the summer, SummerSlam. Mustafa Ali finally beats Seth Rollins for the fifth time, but this time the most personal of them all. What a fight. Mustafa Ali digging down deep and brings the fight to Seth Rollins more than he ever has before with maneuvers like that. Mustafa Ali wins yet again, this time the most personal, as he gains his revenge against the Messiah Seth Rollins for all the attacks a number of weeks ago. Where does the Messiah go from here after another loss to Mustafa Ali? But now that Mustafa Ali has put Seth Rollins in his pass, what is next for Ali in his path here in the WWE? What a fight! He survives the steel cage here at SummerSlam. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the Raw Women's Championship. It is time for our fourth championship match here this evening at SummerSlam. And it is the WWE Women's Championship of the World on the line. The number one contender, Shotzi, the fiery, in-your-face woman who earned this opportunity a number of weeks ago on main event where she survived a four-way elimination contest against Ember Moon, Casey Catanzaro, and Shayna Baszler to earn this contest. And there's a whole lot of writing on this match for Shotzi. Back on March 21st on Monday Night Raw, Shotzi met Bianca Belair in the ring for the first time. In an absolutely extraordinary effort, Shotzi came up short against Bianca Belair. The two met in a rematch on main event on March 29th, where if Shotzi won the match, she would earn a future Women's Championship opportunity. Unfortunately for her, she yet again came up short against Bianca Belair and yet another great fight by Shotzi. We have seen Shotzi grow ever since those performances against the EST of the WWE. Shotzi has gotten better and better each and every time she steps in the ring. Recent victories over Io Shirai, as well as Mrs. Money in the Bank, the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka, this past Monday night on Raw. If Shotzi has ever been more ready for this contest, I believe that she possibly can get the job done here tonight. This is a woman who we believe has all the tools to be one of the future pieces of the WWE Women's Division. She knows Bianca Belair. I'm sure she has studied her previous contest with the EST as well. This is a long-awaited rematch for Shotzi. The third contest between these women, this time for all the marbles with the WWE Women's Championship on the line. And here comes the EST of the WWE, your WWE Women's Champion of the World, Bianca Belair. Belair has been dominant as the champion in recent months. She retained the title over Sasha Banks at Backlash. We saw Bianca Belair retain the title yet again against Rhea Ripley, the Nightmare at Money in the Bank. She then again defeated the Nightmare on Monday Night Raw 
in a no-holds-barred contest. Bianca Belair, one of the most dominant women, I would say possibly in WWE history. And it's been an incredible reign for her as the champion. She looks the part. She is the part. She is a superstar, and she is a worthy of being a champion here in the WWE. She knows Shotzi, she's beaten her in the past. Can she get the job done in their third meeting? June 26th, SummerSlam, right here, right now. The title's on the line. Let's send things down to the ring. Introducing the challenger from Oakland, California. And introducing the champion from Knoxville, Tennessee, the Raw Women's Champion, Bianca Belair! And here we go with your co-main event here tonight at SummerSlam. Your fourth of five championship matches here this evening. And this one for the biggest prize for the women today, the WWE Women's Championship of the World. Current champion Bianca Belair puts up the belt against number one contender, that woman Shotzi. Who is going to leave Phoenix, Arizona with the title? We're going to find out right here, right now, as the bell is underway. And this match is sounded. Shotzi knee into the cover. Shotzi trying to get the quick advantage over Bianca Belair. Smart strategy by Shotzi there, trying to take Belair off her game. Snap suplex. And Shotzi going to the cover again on the champion, trying to beat the champion quick here. Interesting strategy from Shotzi again. She's come a long way since those losses against Bianca Belair back in March. She's gained some very gutsy performance victories over Io Shirai. And again, this past Monday night on Raw, where she defeated Mrs. Money in the Bank, Asuka. Shotzi has grown a lot. She's learned a lot inside of the ring. This is absolutely her biggest match in her career thus far. This time with the title on the line against Bianca Belair. As Belair is now taking the fight to Shotzi after Shotzi took the fight to Belair right off the bell with that running knee. And Belair absolutely, as we've talked about a lot about her in the past, knows how to get it done inside the ring. Multiple ways she can beat you. As she looks like she could be heading for one of those signature maneuvers that we've seen her beat Shotzi in the past with before. That move, that elbow drop has kept Shotzi down in the past. But Shotzi gets the shoulder up early on in the contest, but also got to give credit to Shotzi for recognizing the maneuver and possibly being able to withstand the blow a little more. This has already been an incredible contest between these two about a minute into this thing as these women are going at it as they know the biggest prize in the business for the WWE Women's Championship is on the line here. And Belair going to use her strengths over Shotzi here, literally picking Shotzi off the mat and slams her out of the canvas. Oh, wait a minute, look at this, the EST. Looking to make it a dose. Slam Shotzi down yet again. Blair's strength absolutely going to be her strength and size in this contest as she's going for a three-peat on Shotzi. Make it a hat trick into the cover. And Blair almost putting Shotzi away there. Shotzi getting the shoulder off of the three power slams from the EST. Goes for the backdrop. Shotzi lands on her feet nice and seguri. Shotzi, I'm sure, as we've mentioned, has studied those matches against the women's champion and has learned her arsenal inside and out, which I'd say favors the challenger here tonight. Blair is the champion for a reason, as we were talking about a few minutes ago. She has multiple ways she could beat in the ring, and she has proven that each and every time she steps foot inside the squared circle. As that elbow drop that she hit on Shotzi a few moments ago has put Shotzi away in a previous meeting between the two. Blair goes for the cover on the number one contender to retain the championship at Shotzi gets the shoulder up. We're seeing a lot of close covers in the early minutes of this matchup here. Both women coming with strategy here tonight as Shotzi hits that double knees. Now she's into the cover, looking to become the new champion. But Blair gets the shoulder up. We talked about the matches that Bianca Blair has been through recently in her title reign. Sasha Banks should beat her in about five minutes back at Backlash unintentionally breaking the ribs of Sasha. We haven't seen her since, and Shotzi may have just broken the ribs of Bianca Belair. Senton from the apron to the floor, crushing Belair's ribs between Shotzi and the floor here at the Footprint Center. 
Blair standing out. Shotzi's got her in her predicament as she's headed to the top rope. Could be on her up for that coffin drop, but Blair gets up and Shotzi elects for the axe hammer instead. Still effective as she goes for the cover here. But Blair gets the canvas. Or excuse me, the shoulder off the canvas. Shotzi is bringing the fight to the WWE Women's Champion like we've never seen her before. I think that's credit to how much Shotzi has grown over the last couple of months. She has survived some very tough matchups. Shotzi drops the elbow on Belair. She's been all over the WWE Women's Champion. She's clearly coming with a strategy here tonight. Not that Belair isn't. Not that she hasn't been putting in the offense. But you gotta give credit to the challenger here. As she is really bringing the fight to the champion. Goes for the splash. Bianca Belair has it scouted though. Gets out of the way there. Shotzi's dazed and Belair hits her with the drop kick. And Belair follows it up with the shooting star press. One of the maneuvers we've seen Belair get the win with in the past. But Shotzi gets the shoulder up. A lot of close covers in this match the last number of minutes. Belair's headed up to the top. Shotzi right there to meet her though. Look at this. Fall away. Slam. Belair takes the fall. Back and forth the seesaw of momentum goes in this contest. What a night it has been here at SummerSlam. Our eighth of nine contests here this evening. Your co-main event for the Women's Championship. And these two women absolutely tearing down the footprint center right now. As Shotzi going for the tilt-a-whirl. Head scissors takes Bianca Belair for an amusement park ride off her feet. Belair's down. Shotzi drops that senton right, right again. Excuse me. One of her signature maneuvers as she's now headed to the top rope. Could be looking for the senton. Lux for the splash instead. And Blair could be down. Shotzi, yeah, going for the cover yet again. So we have a new women's champion, but Bianca Belair again digging down deep. And able to find the strength to kick out of that maneuver right there. Blair grabbing the hold of Shotzi. And look at this once again, going to use her strength. Over the number one contender, slams her down to the mat. And Shotzi's taking a lot of those falls in this matchup. The pain is going to catch up to her. However, Belair's headed to the top. 450 splash! And because of Shotzi's positioning, she eats the splash to the lower back. And that is not going to go well for Shotzi. And she's going for the cover here. And the number one contender about to lose her opportunity, but she gets the shoulder up at the last second. Shotzi living to fight another chance here in this matchup. But Shotzi has really got to be feeling the lower back pain after all the attack for the WWE Women's Champion thus far. Goes for the crossbody. Shotzi counters it. Slams Belair down to the mat. Bianca Belair grabbing a hold. Wait a minute here. Nice snap suplex. Shotzi again taking a fall on that lower back. And look at this, I think Bianca Belair smells blood in the water. Using her strength again, brings Shotzi down. Power slam just elects for one and goes for the cover here. Thought that was going to be enough to put the number one contender away, but Shotzi is really digging down deep in this contest as she's still alive. As she shows her right there, getting out of the way of that moonsault. The number one contender takes the champion down. Nothing pretty about that axe hammer maneuver, but definitely effective in the long run of this contest. Shotzi sending the champion into the corner. Belair evading the assault. Goes for the counter. Shotzi counter. Send, sends Belair into the corner. Now up to the top rope. Clearly number one contender's got something in mind. And she just sends Bianca Belair on a ride to the outside of the ring. And wait a minute here. Shotzi's headed to the top. Hits the splash from the top rope to the outside of the ring. That's twice now in this contest that Belair has been pinned between her opponent and the floor here in the arena. I think those two maneuvers might equal out to all the attack that Shotzi has felt. Falling on her lower back in this ring. Momentum is in the corner of Shotzi right now as the women's champions' eggs are scrambled at the moment. A nice Shotzi. Forearm by Shotzi. Belair counters that one there. Had it scattered after multiple maneuvers. And Belair, nice power slam once again, using her strength to her advantage. And look at this. It's got Shotzi up. Swings her around. And Shotzi eats a neck breaker to the back of the knee. Belair goes right into the cover. Smelling blood in the water on the weakened opponent. 
And Shotzi is still in there. And Belair's got to keep her eye on the ball. And she might have just got knocked out off that Insiguri. Belair's dazed Shotzi. Nothing pretty there. Oh, wait a minute. Arm breaker is going to elect for a submission hold at the current moment. It's got Blair in a predicament. Blair's down. Shotzi once again goes for that senton. A move that has aided her in victory the last number of weeks and her build up to SummerSlam. And that match versus Io Shirai and that number one contender's four away and the match against Asuka this past Monday Night on Raw. A Shotzi, look at that, catches Bianca Belair with the double knees. Belair's down, goes for the senton, but Belair gets out of the way. Belair grabbing a hold, but now Shotzi's still with fight reversals as once again the momentum is shifting back and forth between champion and challenger. And Shotzi's just trying to go for the TKO there on Belair. Look at that! Speaking of which, once again hits that knee and hits the senton. Shotzi's stringing together a couple of maneuvers. She's headed to the top rope, Belair's down, Shotzi, coffin drop on the women's champion. Goes into the cover against the number one contender. We have a new WWE Women's Champion. Shotzi defeats Bianca Bo Oh my God. Not now. Mrs. Money in the Bank. The Empress of Tomorrow. Asuka is in the house. Shotzi literally seconds ago just beat Bianca Belair for the Women's Championship, but Asuka has arrived. We got a ring of the bell. And ladies and gentlemen, we got another WWE Women's Championship match here this evening. Shotzi, double knees to Asuka. It's happening so fast, I can't even call the damn action. My God, la ladies and gentlemen, Shotzi just defeated Bianca Belair for the Women's Championship. She is the rightful owner to the Women's Championship of the WWE. Before she can get the title in her grasp, though, she's trying to defeat Asuka here into the cover this champion. Asuka gets the shoulder up before Shotzi can even get the title in her hands. Literally seconds after the bell rang, Asuka is in the house. And right here, right now, she is cashing in Money in the Bank versus a weakened Shotzi after that physical match against Bianca Belair. I can't say I blame Asuka. I don't like it. But at the end of the day, that's what the Money in the Bank's all about. And Shotzi is worse for wear right now, but she's trying to hang in here against the Empress of Tomorrow. Goes for the senton and hits it. Hits it again. Shotzi is trying to just run off adrenaline at the moment. Went to the well too many times there, and she ate the canvas. I cannot believe I'm calling a second women's championship match here at the moment as Asuka with the German suplex on Shotzi. Shotzi obviously not prepared at the current moment for Mrs. Money in the Bank. I'm sure she didn't have her eyes, or have her mind I should say, on the fact that this could be a possibility here tonight as Asuka drops the elbow. And Asuka into the cover. Is she about to win the women's championship here? But Shotzi living to fight in this contest. Shotzi had so much momentum and so much build up towards her match with Bianca Belair that again, I'm sure she didn't even have her mind on the fact that this was a possibility here tonight. Asuka, who's been holding the Money in the Bank briefcase since May the 2nd when she took down the contract in Philadelphia, is cashing in right here, right now, June 22nd, or June 26th, excuse me, here tonight in Phoenix. And Shotzi is just worse for wear at the moment. She just got done that contest with Bianca Belair, and I can't believe it, just seconds after the bell, Asuka is here to cash in Money in the Bank. It's gonna be our second cash in tonight as Edge is getting ready to cash in his Money in the Bank in our main event versus AJ Styles. And Asuka clearly knowing that she's gotta do some damage on Shotzi. She's running off adrenaline a little bit in the first few moments of this matchup here. But Asuka beating down your current WWE Women's Champion. Shotzi's still in this, no. And if Shotzi's got a chance in hell at winning right now, it's going to be running off the adrenaline of the matchup she just participated in. However, Asuka hits the rope. Shotzi's dazed, and she may be knocked out for good off that hip attack. Asuka's not satisfied yet. Yeah, wait a minute. Oh, no. Asuka... 
Asuka lock locked in on the WWE Women's Champion. And Shotzi's got no choice but to tap out. And just like that, we have yet a new WWE Women's Champion of the World. After that hellacious back and forth exciting matchup between Bianca Belair and Shotzi. Shotzi wins, doesn't even get a chance to hold the title in her hands. Asuka cashes in money in the bank. And we have our second new women's champion of the WWE here tonight. I cannot believe the events that just transpired here in Phoenix. Eventful night to say the least here at here SummerSlam. I can't say I like it, but at the end of the day, that is what the Money in the Bank is all about. A title opportunity at any given time, at any point, up for up to one year. And Asuka took advantage of that stipulation wholeheartedly here tonight. And I'm sure it didn't matter who walked out between Belair and Shotzi. Asuka had a premeditated plan and she capitalized to the fullest and she is leaving Phoenix the new WWE Women's Champion. What well, is now time for the main event? Will the Rated R Superstar Edge become a 12-time world champion as he cashes in Money in the Bank versus the phenomenal AJ Styles with the WWE Championship on the line? The road to success brings out the most phenomenal attributes in the best competitors. A prime example is the current reigning WWE Champion, AJ Styles. Ever since March, AJ Styles has been on the roll of a lifetime. His road to success all began when he made his way through three rounds of a number one contenders tournament with the opportunity to become champion awaiting the winner. Styles outperformed the almighty Bobby Lashley in a main event clinic at Backlash to successfully regain the WWE Championship. Week after week, AJ Styles has continued to prove why he is the best, not just in WWE, but the best in the world. Awaiting AJ Styles next is an ultimate opportunist awaiting to right the wrongs of recent history. The Rated R Superstar Edge fell to AJ Styles at WrestleMania. After weeks away, Edge made his return to successfully qualify for the Money in the Bank ladder match. Edge continued his newfound momentum in Philadelphia on May the 2nd, where he captured the contract by outlasting five other challengers. Edge made his intentions clear. It wasn't just about cashing in the contract to become champion, but it was about proving that he can defeat AJ Styles. Edge did what only two other men have done, announced his cash in ahead of time, and the rest, as they say, is history. The road to success drives us all the way to the Valley of the Sun. Can Edge prove that he can defeat AJ Styles as well as become a 12-time world champion? Or will the phenomenal presence of AJ be too much for the Rated R Superstar to handle? The stage is set. The time is now. Who will leave Phoenix as the WWE Champion? It is main event time. Sunday night, June 26th, Footprint Center, Phoenix, Arizona. Mr. Money in the Bank cashes in the briefcase for the third time in his career. For the first time, announcing that cash in advance. For Edge tonight, it isn't just about bringing home his 12th world championship in his career, but it's about proving that he can defeat the phenomenal one, AJ Styles, the man who beat him back at WrestleMania. Edge for weeks has been scouting AJ Styles. This past Monday Night on Raw, they were forced to team up. And as we saw, that didn't go as planned. It all comes down to tonight. The briefcase that Edge holds in his hand will be handed over. And the WWE Championship is on the line in the main event of SummerSlam. Edge just cashed in that Money in the Bank contract two times already in his career, both times successfully. 
one time against the WWE Champion John Cena, and one time winning the World Heavyweight Championship against the Phenom, The Undertaker. Will Lightning Strike, for the third time in the Rated R Superstar's illustrious Hall of Fame career, will it strike against AJ Styles for the WWE Championship of the World? And here comes the WWE World Heavyweight Champion, the phenomenal AJ Styles is in the house. AJ Styles won the WWE Championship for another time in his career, back on April the 11th, when he dethroned the almighty Bobby Lashley at the Backlash pay-per-view. We have seen AJ retain the title in a triple threat contest against the Prince Finn Balor and the charismatic enigma Jeff Hardy back on May the 2nd in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania at Money in the Bank. But the road all leads to tonight. The Rated R Superstar Edge, the second time that these two men will meet in their careers. And this time, a bigger opportunity is at stake. The opportunity to wave the flag of the WWE and be the face of the franchise. The gold that is around AJ Styles' waist right now is up for grabs in one of the biggest SummerSlam main events in the history of the WWE. The stage is set. The gold is on the line. Mr. Money in the Bank cashes in the briefcase for a chance to become a 12-time world champion. Let's send things down to the ring for your official introductions. Introducing the challenger from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Weighing in at 249 pounds, the rated R superstar. And introducing the champion from Gainesville, Georgia, weighing in at 218 pounds, he is the WWE Champion, the Phenomenal AJ Styles! Is AJ Styles handing over the WWE Championship for the last time in this reign? He has held the gold before, he has lost the gold before. He doesn't want to go back down that road of chasing the championship yet again. Will that title still belong to the phenomenal AJ Styles? Will we leave Phoenix here tonight? Or will Edge become a 12-time world champion? We are going to find out right now as the main event of SummerSlam is underway. Edge in the red, AJ Styles in the white. And the gold is up for grabs as AJ goes down early against the Rated R Superstar. And again for Edge, this is not about just winning the WWE Championship tonight. He has had a Hall of Fame career with a list of accolades a mile long. He's held every championship he possibly can here in the WWE. Every accolade you can think of for Edge. Money in the Bank, Royal Rumble, WrestleMania main events. Edge has done it all in the squared circles. AJ Styles with a springboard moonsault going for the cover on Edge. AJ not getting the win just yet. But again, that is what is on the line for Edge as well. It is about defeating AJ Styles, proving that he can get that win over the phenomenal one at this stage in his career. As AJ is going to the top rope early, this is where AJ succeeds, goes for the crossbody, miscalculates it there. That's going to give the momentum right back to the rated R superstar. Edge goes for a shot. AJ able to take him down. Remember AJ Styles. He knows that he can beat AJ Styles. Or excuse me, he knows that he can beat Edge. For Edge, I'm sure he has watched their WrestleMania rematch back numerous times. Trying to study the phenomenal one. Especially at this stage in his career. As he is the man in WWE. AJ Styles bringing a little bit of brutality to this matchup in the early minutes. Beaten down on the Rated R Superstar. We've seen Edge, or excuse me, we've seen Edge in some wars as of late. He's back on May the 2nd. Where he was able to defeat five other competitors in that Money in the Bank ladder match where he pulled down the briefcase 
that you saw him make his way to the ring with here tonight. The briefcase that Edge is now handed over. Hence the reason he is getting this championship opportunity right here, right now. We've seen Edge in recent weeks defeat Damian Priest on Monday Night Raw in a very physical altercation. And again, this past Monday night, we saw Edge and AJ Styles be forced to team up. And evidently, AJ Styles wasn't interested for a moment. Tried coming back to save Edge, but in the end, Seth Rollins and Murphy took advantage of the split team of the Rated R Superstar and the Phenomenal One. And were able to score the victory over Edge on that night. AJ eyeing up AJ Styles here and takes him off his feet with the sweet chin music. AJ goes down, Edge into the cover, new champion. AJ gets the shoulder up. You know, as we've gone throughout this night here at SummerSlam, five championships on the line, and so far, every single title in the WWE has changed hands. AJ's heading to the top. Look at this, AJ, look at that! Corkscrew from the top rope. And Edge, they have just got the wind knocked out of him here. AJ dragging Edge away from the rope, smart to make sure there's not a rope break. AJ going into the cover, Edge gets the shoulder up. AJ working over Edge here, but again, as we were mentioning, the WWE Championships, all of them have been on the line here tonight, and all of them have changed hands thus far. Ricochet becoming the new Cruiserweight Champion. Dominic and Rey Mysterio bringing home the World Tag Team Championships. Pete Dunne becoming the new Intercontinental Champion. And as you just saw in our co-main event, the Women's Championship changing hands twice in one night. Short-lived championship reign for Shotzi. You got a feel for the woman after her, how hard she worked. But of course, that is the nature of the Money in the Bank contract. And Asuka cashing in successfully over Shotzi to become the new WWE Women's Champion moments ago. Will Lightning strike twice in the same night with double Money in the Bank cash-ins here. AJ looking to make sure that does not happen on his watch. But Edge gets the shoulder up. And remember, if Edge loses this match here, that's it. He loses the chance at cashing in that Money in the Bank contract. And he's looking to lose his chance at the WWE Championship as AJ Styles has got that calf crusher locked in on Edge. And AJ able to break it early, and that is very pivotal for the Rated R Superstar, especially the later this match goes, does not want to be limping around on one leg. As Edge, look at that, nice drop kick, sends the phenomenal one to the outside of the ring. AJ down. Edge going to follow him out to the outside. Look at that, Edge just sending AJ right to the barricade, getting physical here in the first couple of minutes of this WWE Championship main event. What a night it has been here at SummerSlam while the brawl continues at ringside. I want to thank everybody that has joined us here tonight for the SummerSlam pay-per-view. A night we are never going to forget, Sunday night, June 26th, right here in Phoenix, Arizona. It has been a historic night, one of the best nights we have had thus far. As Edge taking down AJ Styles, of course, the rated R superstar. He can't win the championship on the outside of the ring, but he can certainly do some damage on the Phenomenal One. However, a situation like this definitely favors the champion here as AJ takes Edge over on the outside. As we mentioned, it definitely favors the champion here. AJ could absolutely retain the championship via count out if he wanted to. Now, I don't believe Edge. Wait a minute here. AJ's got him in a predicament. Look at that. AJ Styles with that reverse fireman's carry sending Edge down for a ride right out here in front of us at ringside. But as I was going to mention, I don't believe AJ Styles would want to pick up the victory that way, defeating Edge via count out here. He's beaten Edge in the past. He knows he can get the job done, and I'm sure he wants to get it done yet again. And AJ taking his eye off the ball, and Edge sends him for a ride, flying off the apron. WWE Champion down, Edge goes for the Axe Hammer, but AJ too quick, gets away of Edge. Edge trying to follow here, AJ back out, we're getting the brawl once again here at ringside. AJ grabs a hold, or excuse me, Edge does, and sends AJ into the barricade. And wait a minute here, Edge is clearing off the announce table. The Rated R Superstar's got something in mind. And he takes AJ out with the kick. It's another kick in this contest. He's hit that move a few minutes ago. A couple more of those, and AJ's going to be knocked out for good, and we're going to be leaving Phoenix with a new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. 
AJ trying to fight back and make sure he doesn't get put in that precarious situation that Edge may have been planning, clearing off the announce table, but Edge, look at that! Locking a hold of the phenomenal WWE Champion. Sends him for that German suplex and now comes flying off the apron with that clothesline. And Edge, you see, he keeps breaking the count here. He's clearly got something in mind on the outside of the ring as he hits AJ Styles with that axe hammer. Edge knows he can't win the WWE Championship on the outside of the squared circle, but he could certainly do some damage over the current champion himself. As he's continuing to beat down the WWE Champion. AJ is down right now. Definitely in a situation with Edge on his tails. Now wait a minute, look at this. Right out here in front of the announce table, AJ Styles face plants due to the hands of the rated R superstar. Edge grabbing a hold, gonna elect to send AJ back to the ring. Absolutely did a number of these last few moments or so on the outside of the ring. AJ's gotta be feeling it off the attack. He must smell the sense of urgency after that insiguri from AJ Styles as he takes Edge out with that neck breaker. Very interesting match since the opening bell and interesting strategies from both of these men as AJ Styles takes out Edge with one of his signature strikes. It almost seems like the strategies thus far for AJ Styles to try to out-wrestle and defeat AJ Styles that way, or she means defeat Edge, as he once again sends Edge for a ride off that reverse fireman's carry. And that may be enough to keep the champion down. AJ going into the cover of the challenger, but Edge gets the shoulder up. As we were mentioning, seemingly the strategies thus far from what we can put together is that AJ Styles Looks like he's trying to out wrestle a, or excuse me, out wrestle Edge and defeat him that way. Edge, on the other hand, clearly coming out with a more brawling mentality here tonight. Maybe he believes he can't out wrestle AJ Styles. And AJ Styles, wait a minute, goes for the phenomenal forearm and he hits it. Edge may be knocked out cold. AJ to the cover off the forearm here. Oh, Edge gets the shoulder up at the very last second. And AJ Styles was. Damn near close to retaining the championship there. Edge tried knocking AJ's balance loose, hitting the ropes, but AJ had already springed off, hit the air, and was able to change the trajectory to hit that phenomenal forearm. Oh, and I believe Edge has been busted wide open. I'm not sure if it was off the forearm or off that knee that Edge, or should be AJ hit moments later, but regardless, the challenger is bleeding from the forehead here, and that is not gonna go well as we get into the championship rounds in this main event contest. And you almost smell the sense of urgency from the rated R superstar here as he just got hit with that phenomenal forearm and now he's bleeding from the forehead. AJ on the second, or excuse me, Edge on the second rope. Look at that! Spear off the second rope, a different angle, takes AJ off his feet and AJ gets the shoulder up. And we've seen Edge hit that maneuver in recent weeks, he hit that second rope spear to Damian Priest a number of weeks ago. And I believe we mentioned it then, and we'll mention it now. It's an effective maneuver, and it's a different angle off Edge's usual spear. And because of that different angle, it may not be as impactful as Edge's finishing maneuver spear. But something like that will definitely be enough to knock out your opponent. Elevated DDT by the challenger. As Edge sends AJ into the corner, and ever since Edge has been busted wide open, as we mentioned, and we'll say it again, you smell the sense of urgency out of Mr. Money in the Bank. As he has been in control since that moment, and he's stomping away on the WWE Champion here. Edge shifting the momentum to the corner of himself, to the corner of the Rated R Superstar. Looking to prove, as we've mentioned all throughout tonight, that he can beat AJ Styles, and that he become a 12-time World Champion. Edge off that knee and a nice clothesline. I believe off that knee, AJ Styles as well has been cut open. And if the battle wounds don't show anything, it should definitely show the fight. And these men to leave here tonight is the WWE Champion. Anything it takes at any and all costs to walk out of the biggest party of the summer and one of the biggest pay-per-views of the year with the most prestigious gold in the business. Edge is down, AJ Styles backing control of this main event affair. Nice backbreaker, follows it up with this quick neck breaker. The Rated R Superstar goes down. 
Now Edge fighting back. It's almost as if both men literally are smelling blood in the water on the other opponent. They try to strike him while the iron's hot. AJ fighting back. You see the momentum as we've seen in a couple of our matches here tonight at SummerSlam. The momentum shifting back and forth. And Edge now pulls AJ in with the backbreaker. A simple yet effective move for Mr. Money in the Bank here. Edge once again goes to the second rope and he drops an elbow. Not a move you see a lot out of Edge, but it's a move that could be awarding him the undisputed championship here. And AJ gets the shoulder up. Man, what a match this has been. And we're definitely getting into some deep waters here in our main event for the WWE Championship. AJ back in control. And wait a minute, wait a minute here. AJ Styles, he's in the corner eyeing up Edge. AJ Styles just used Edge's own spear. And oh man, that was almost it. AJ Styles almost putting the Rated R Superstar away with his own damn maneuver, going for the phenomenal forearm here, but Edge getting out of the predicament. And man, what a, what a finish to this contest. And talk about adding insult to injury. If AJ would have won this contest via that spear on Edge there, if Edge would have lost to AJ Styles with his own move being used against him. And that's something we've seen AJ Styles use in the past. Remember all the way back to March, and AJ was making his way through that number one contenders tournament to originally qualify to earn a shot at the WWE Championship. We saw AJ use the moves of Ricochet as well as Damian Priest against those opponents. As AJ Styles with that brain buster on Edge. Edge trying to fire up here, go after the phenomenal one, but Edge gets his momentum taken out from under him. You see the Rated R Superstars trying to fight and use every ounce of energy and adrenaline in his soul. Goes for the phenomenal forearm. Luckily, Edge gets out of the way, misses for his own maneuver. And Edge takes down AJ, trying to slow down the trajectory of this matchup at the moment. And you see Edge's plan, ever since he got hit with that phenomenal forearm earlier, he's been trying to, originally it looked like, take the balance of AJ Styles away. AJ Styles clearly found a way out of that. And now twice in a row, he has avoided the phenomenal forearm. AJ's best maneuver, the maneuver that won him the WWE Championship back at Backlash. They're trying to sidestep AJ Styles by any means necessary. And AJ may be knocked out. Edge just hit a couple of those headbutts. Forehead to forehead, battle wound to battle scars. AJ's back now, and AJ is once again, AJ is clearly wants to hit that elbow because he knows if he hits one more, excuse me, that forearm, he knows one more, that could be it. That could be the exclamation point he needs. The Rated R Superstar once again tapping into those deeper waters. Going forehead to forehead out of those brutal headbutts to the phenomenal AJ Styles. Sends him into the corner, and AJ, just the energy being taken out of him in this championship matchup. AJ Styles is down. Edge has got something in mind here. Rated R Superstars eyeing up the WWE Champion. There's AJ Styles. Wait a minute. AJ taking out the calf. Edge bounces up. Both men going for strikes. Both men missing. Edge follows it up with a super kick. AJ goes for the, excuse me, Edge goes for the elbow. AJ got out of the way, but this time Edge hits the forearm. You feel the intensity of this main event contest right now. And there's the knee that has taken AJ off his feet multiple times. Edge is into the corner. AJ's in her predicament, the spear. The champion's down. And the championship belongs to the rated R. Superstar for the 12th time in his Hall of Fame career. And for the third time, he has successfully cashed in the money in the bank. And your new undisputed WWE Heavyweight Champion of the World, Edge takes down the phenomenal AJ Styles here tonight at Phoenix. My God, what a hell of a main event. Edge surviving everything AJ threw at him here tonight. An onslaught from the Phenomenal One. But it only took one spear for the Rated R Superstar to Here's get his way. And the new WWE Champion, the Rated R Superstar, Edge! 
After everything Edge has been through, he gets the victory back over AJ Styles. And after the long, hard-fought road over the last few years since returning to the WWE, Edge is once again the WWE Champion. Today has been historic. Sunday, June 26th will go down in the record books. Thank you for joining us here at SummerSlam. Edge leaves Phoenix, the new WWE Champion. Thank you and good night from Phoenix. On when I chase like that, yeah, I play so strong with a knife in the back. I'm a swing home run like a baseball bat. Gonna see me rise if you hate on that. I don't play both sides, don't need no cap. I'm a ride.